And the first game against Boston College, Ryan Williams out of Suffolk, Virginia, will kick off. Virginia Tech won the toss and deferred, and they kick off to BC. High kickoff going to Kenyatta Watson at the three. And he is in trouble inside the 10. A nice tackle by Steve Sanders, a wide receiver who got down and made it happen. Glenn Foley will be the trigger man at quarterback. You'll see his numbers, 1,926 yards. Pete Kendall, they like the run behind their big left tackle at 6'5", 266. Clarence Cannon, a dynamic receiver, a guy who can get you the touchdown. He can make the big grab. Six-yard kickoff return. The Eagles put it in play. First and 10 at the nine-yard line. Foley wants to throw immediately. Got a man open down the middle. It's the tight end, Pete Mitchell. First down to the 47-yard line. He beat Ken Graham, the linebacker. Foley right on the money, 37 yards. This is a play they worked on a lot in practice this week. They spread the defense out like we talked about in the open, and they get a nice matchup. The tight end working against Ken Brown, a linebacker. The key to this play, great protection, allowed Foley to read the defense and throw the deep pass down the middle. Great matchup getting your tight end on that linebacker. Cannon and Boyd to the top of your screen. Laro the up back. They give it to David Green. Big hole up the middle. First down, Boston College. David Green. The tackle by Larry Green, number 43. Probably the best thing Boston College does offensively is keeps a defense off balance. They hit the big pass play, then they give it to the tailback. David Green, they get a nice block in there by their center, Tommy Nalen, who's a, a veteran leader, a senior, and they're playing that center position. BC on a roll at the Virginia Tech 41 after that 13-yard gain by David Green. Green and Laro in the backfield. Foley with time. Sticks it out there, completes it to Greg Rice. Another first down, Foley in charge for Boston College. Larry Green makes the stop again. 19 yards on that completion. Well, Glenn Foley is the orchestrator of this offense, and now he read the blitz. He audible to a, a pass because he knew that he had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and again, read and beat the blitz. He recognized it, he made the proper audible, and he has great protection from the offensive line. Kept both backs in that time. Two extra blockers in there allowed him the time to get it downfield. Ball's at the 22-yard line. Everybody in motion, a lot of shifting. You'll see that all afternoon from Boston College. Michael Kim. This slot, we're gonna run it. Nothing doing there. J.C. Price, first big play for Virginia Tech. They lose three on the play. Dwayne Knight, watch out for him. A terrific player playing at linebacker. Undersized, but he's very quick. He's got four sacks. Antonio Banks, the free safety, has broken up five passes, and he has three picks. Virginia Tech got into the bear defense that time, an eight-man front, and stuffed that running play. That they did. Campbell, the long setback. Mitchell in motion. Foley to throw with time. Now under pressure. Steps out. Throws poorly to Campbell. Had him wide open at the 17-yard line, but Foley did a terrific job to buy some time. Yeah, you know, you don't see Glenn Foley make too many throws like that. I think he was so shocked that he didn't get sacked on this play that he just kind of lost his concentration for a second and made a bad throw because he just was able to duck under the outside rush, and it, he was very lucky to escape the sack. BC's offense has been quite crisp today. Third down and 13. The number's there. A fabulous number on third down. The blitz, they pick it up. Foley delivers complete inside the 15-yard line. That'll be just shy of a first down. Clarence Cannon with this reception. And Larry Green being kept busy. A 14-yard gain. And that is good enough for a first down for Boston College. Well, this was an all-out blitz. They brought the free safety. The only problem, he came from so far off that he never had a chance to get to Foley. Foley was able to stay in the pocket and throw the out pattern. David Green and Gordon Laro in the eye formation. Give it to Green. Breaks a couple of tackles. Pushes down towards the five-yard line. Boy, did Gordon Laro get a block. Five-yard gain on that play. Good blocks by Laro up the middle. George Del Rico had to make the stop. 
Gordon Laro is a tight end. He's 250 pounds, and he's in there playing like a fullback. And, and we talked about how Tom Coughlin likes to use his tight ends in different ways. All that is is putting a much bigger guy in there blocking against 230-pound linebackers, and he's become very effective as being a lead blocker. Second down and six, falls at the seventh. Just underway here at Boston College. Green right side. He's going to walk in. Touchdown, Eagles! Seven-yard run at BC. Jammed it right down the throat of Virginia Tech to take a 6-0 lead. Big blocks by Laro on Larry Green. The key to this drive has been recognition and execution. Great mixture of run pass, and this time they get a nice block on the right side. And David Green, who scored three touchdowns last week as a starter, adds the first touchdown in this ball game. Great job reading the defense by Glenn Foley, getting his team into the right plays. The only play that he got into the bad play was the run, one run against the eight-man front. Other than that, outstanding execution by Foley. Here's David Gordon for the extra point. The left footers missed only one all year. It's in the Bucks. And Virginia Tech watches BC go eight plays, 91 yards. A seven-yard run by David Green. And Boston College has taken a 7-0 lead with 12.04 to go first period. We're back after these messages. Virginia Tech on its heels, Todd, after the big drive by Boston College. Well, I'll tell you what, this is an excellent drive. Now, I want you to see something. This guy right here for Virginia Tech's number 43, Larry Green. He's a defensive back, about 175 pounds. Right here, you can't see him as big Gordon Laro again. He's going to lead the play, and I want you to watch the block that Laro gets on Larry Green on this play on the goal line. Just an outstanding block, gets right into his chest and opens up a clear lane for David Green. Not only that, look how long he kept the block going. He, he didn't finish until he drove him into the ground. Excellent technique. Brett Bleeker set to kick off for Boston College. Tommy Edwards, Dwayne Thomas, they are deep for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And they gotta be a little bit stunned here. As we have two ball clubs that score a lot of points and BC wasting little time. BC came into the game averaging 34.4 points a game and Virginia Tech at almost 38. This kick, a short one. The pooch kick, it may work, let's see, jump ball. Just that quickly we change sports by Virginia Tech comes up with the ball. Well, the mistake made here is when, when they saw the pooch kick and the high kick, they should have called for a fair catch. It, it becomes almost like a punt at that point. And you can see right there, Virginia Tech was a little bit con confused by that kick. They weren't expecting it. Brian Edmonds, a backup fullback, number 32, probably should have just made a fair catch right there. But that area, kick coverage, has been a real Achilles heel for this Boston College team so far. Cornelius White made the play. Roll out by DeShazo. Got time. Under pressure now. Scoots out, trying to make a play, and he bounces it to Freeman at the 35 and incompletion. But you see why Steve Sabo, the defensive coordinator, is concerned about Virginia Tech. Eight plays, 91 yards, 256 off the clock. David Green, his fourth running touchdown this year, fifth overall. I think one thing you'll see Boston College do today, they're not going to really all out blitz, but when they do get him running out of the pocket, quarterback Maurice DeShazo, you might see some guys run at him late. Linebackers run at him late, try to get a hit behind the line. Run right side with Dwayne Thomas. Runs over a tackler, picks up a couple. Coming up nicely on that play, number 17, Mike Reed. Gain of three on the play. Here's Maurice DeShazo. The number's impressive. The INT's just four. Second in passing efficiency in the Big East. Jim Pine, durable. Not missed any time at all. Dwayne Thomas out of Fort Myers, Florida, averaging 100 yards per game on the ground. Four wideouts. This is a new look for Virginia Tech. They put this in the week after the West Virginia game when they had an off week. DeShazo scrambling. 35. Oh, flips over. He's right at first down yardage. Number 50, Stephen Boyd, the leading tackler of the Big East Conference, makes the stop, but I think the flip got him the first down. Well, this ends up being almost a quarterback draw. You can see Stephen Boyd is out into coverage, and he's going for the legs. He, he realizes DeShazo is a shifty runner, kind of goes down, takes the low road there. 
But DeShazo comes up with a with a big first down on a, on a drive when they need to respond to that quick score from BC. Three wide outs this time for Virginia Tech. First and 10 at the 39. Seven nothing BC first quarter. Not a lot going on there for Joe Swarm, the fullback, a gain of one. Boyd, number 50 with the stop. Mike Momula can run. 4.68 speed in the 40. Good pass rusher, too, leading that defensive front seven for Boston College. Terrence Wiggins, a big hitter. He's out of Bishop McDevitt High School in Philadelphia. He's got two interceptions, probably the best defender in the secondary for Boston College. Second down and nine. DeShazo sees a blitz coming from the corner. He's audible and right now at the line of scrimmage. Reed creeping in. They run it. Thomas. Closer. Maybe one as Mamula is there, number 59. Now, the interesting thing about this play is it looked like DeShazo saw the blitz coming off the corner, but they still ran a play right into the face of that blitz. That's tough because you're just bringing an extra defender. You see number 17. There's no way to block him. Michael Reed cannot be blocked by the wide receiver when he's right up on the line of scrimmage. So a good guess by Steve Zabo bringing the corner blitz off the outside. Third down and eight for the Hokies. First possession for Virginia Tech to down 7-0. BC took the opening drive and scored. Joe Swarm pushing, scrambling, picks up the first down into BC territory <laughs> as he gets down to about the 46. Boy, he was just a bowling ball there. Picks up 12. Now, this is what makes Virginia Tech a different type of offense. This is third down and eight, and they get in the eye formation and give it to the fullback on the dive option, and he picks up the first down. Boston College has four defensive linemen. They're thinking pass. They're thinking nickel defense. Here comes a team. Boom. Give it to the fullback inside, and they pick up the first down. It's, it's, it's a very different, in-your-face, smash-mouth type of football. Maurice DeShazo, play action. Right side, Sanders gets a great block. The move springs free. Close to a first down. He's inside the 40. John Burke with a terrific block to tight end. Picks up 12 on the play for Virginia Tech. Yeah, you called it, Dave. Just a great block by the tight end, John Burke. They, they go with the quick screen. They fake it into the line. Check this out. A quick throw. Now watch Burke, 83, get the little bit of a cut block. Right there, you see him in the corner of your screen. And Steve Sanders, who is really becoming a threat after he catches the football this year, comes up with a nice game. Mara made the stop. There's the walk-on tight end, John Burke. Jezo flushed out. Uh-oh, he's dangerous here. Down to the 30-yard line. No swarm with a good block. A six-yard pickup for Maurice DeShazo. He's got some kind of speed. Now you know why. Steve Zabo, that's all I can talk about. We don't want this kid to break containment. Well, he says that, but he also, in the same breath, says no team that we've seen has stopped him. No team has kept him in the pocket. Now, you see he does a nice job tucking under the rip, under the rush. Look at the hit at the end here. Ooh, that's He's clearly down on the ground. Stephen Boyd comes in. That's, a, that's a call you get away with at home. The option. Thomas, not enough of a block. Good fill by number six to make that play. Eric Shorter, Dan Kerr finished him off. Good play by Shorter out of Hartford, Connecticut. No gain. Well, Boston College has had some practice against the option the last two weeks with Tulane and Army here. Nice job staying in your proper lanes. Shorter had the pitch man. Kerr's coming over to take the, te uh, to take the dive back. Nice job being in the right place, stopping that option. Tenth play of the drive, BC up 7-0, 7 7.39 left first period. Swarm and Thomas in the backfield as DeShazo checks off. Thomas, big scoot outside. Good play by Ted Page and Dan Kerr. Page the first one there, no gain. Ted Page, a high school teammate of Glenn Foley at Cherry Hill East High School in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Now this time, Boston College got into more of a run-stop defense. They were bringing the linebackers up closer to the line of scrimmage. They got great penetration by Ted Page. That was the key. He beat the guard, Chris Malone, number 51, got the penetration, and Thomas had nowhere to go. 47-yard field goal attempt by Ryan Williams. His long this year, 34. He's three for five this year. The conventional kicker hits it. But it's wide to the left, no good, and Boston College has held. 
Virginia Tech kept the ball for a long time, but Williams can't convert on the field goal opportunity. BC leads it 7-0. We're back after these words from our local stations. Beamer in his seventh year at Virginia Tech. Big game this week. And down at Blacksburg, what's been the significance of this game for the Hokies in practice this week? Well, this is the reason I knew it was important to be in a conference because it does have bowl implications, uh, poll implications, but I think just the Big East football conference can do so much for Virginia Tech. But in turn, we can do a lot for the Big East football conference. And I, I think it kind of gets down to days like this where, you know, the, the winner today will, will take over uh, third place. So I think this is what conference is all about. Four wideouts for BC as they start their second drive at the 30-yard line. Glenn Foley, big day already. Three for four, 70 yards. Going for more quick screen. Ivan Boyd, 35, 40. Got a great block from his roommate, Keith Miller. Down to the 40, cuts inside. Clarence Cannon with a block. Down to the 19-yard line. First down, Boston College. 50-yard gain. William Yarborough saved the touchdown. BC on a roll. This play could not have been called against a better defense. This is an all-out blitz again. It's a free safety blitz. There's no one in the middle of the field, so all he has to do is get the ball to the receiver. His defender got picked off, and it's clear sailing for Ivan Boyd. I mean, so much about calling a screen pass is calling it at the right time. It's great against a team that really drops off, and it's great against a blitz if you can pick it up. Darnell Campbell rambling up the middle. That's a gain of eight. Number 27, Antonio Banks. He paid a price to bring down Campbell. Banks only goes 5'10", 180. And Campbell at 6'2", 220. They're running again over their center. Tommy Nalen, 64. You see him do a nice job just turning out. J.C. Price opening a nice hole in there for Darnell Campbell. And Boston College again, the mix-up on first down. Running pass, averaging 19 yards a play on first down. Miller in motion. A lot of shifting. Green, the setback. Miller coming back the other way. All kinds of movement. Blitz, fully got crushed. Completion of Miller at the 10. Gain of two. Dwayne Knight put a lick on Glenn Foley. Got his chops in a hurry. Again, you get all this motion that just is a, a way of trying to confuse the defense. They all come in, then they shoot out into the outside routes, and he had Miller out there, kind of underthrew that one, but again, took a shot at the end of it, didn't get everything on the football. Third and a short one. Arrow and green in the back there. A pass. Bowling all day. Man open. Touchdown! Boston College, Ivan Boyd. Boyd paid a price as he really sucked it up and hung in there. Caught the ball, saw the post coming, but he made the play nonetheless. BC on the board, 13-0. Well, just again, great recognition by Glenn Foley. This is third and one. You're thinking run. He audible to a throw. He put his backs in split protection. Look at both the backs staying in there to protect. They pick up the blitz, and that allows Foley to just sit right in there and wait for Boyd to come to the back of the end zone. Again, Foley just observing the defense. He reads from one side of the field to the other and comes back to Boyd, who makes a, a great catch. Say what, those poles don't move. <laughs> when you hit them, they don't move. Well, they go in a post pattern, and thank goodness they backed him up out of the end zone and only go with the one stanchion. Nice round of applause and appreciation by the BC fans for the courage of Ivan Boyd, his second TD catch of the season, and BC in command early here at Alumni Stadium. Gordon with the extra point is good. So with 4.58 to go, first period, Ivan Boyd has given BC a 14-0 lead over Virginia Tech. We'll be back right after these messages. BC, the lead, 14-0 here at Boston College. And Virginia taking a lot of trouble, Todd. Well, I'll tell you what, we talk about Glenn Foley being a veteran quarterback. Now, this guy right here, the free safety, Antonio Banks, he's a freshman. Now, what's going to happen? Foley's going to come back, and he's going to look to the right, and Banks is going to read his eyes and come over here. When he comes over there, that's going to leave the left side of the formation open, and Foley's going to hit Ivan Boyd in the back of the end zone. He fooled the free safety with his eyes. That's, that's a move that a veteran quarterback gets very comfortable doing after years of playing. 
Super day for Glenn Foley and for Ivan Boyd. Foley, six for seven, 132 yards and a touchdown. Thomas and Edwards deep to receive the Brent Bleeker kick after BC goes four plays, 70 yards, and a buck 50. That coming after the missed 47 yard field goal by Ryan Williams. So Virginia Tech, and I think Todd, there's a question that you talked about earlier this week. DeShazo having a great year, but can he bring him back from two touchdowns back? The pooch kick, effective this time again. To the 30 yard line, they couldn't quite get under it. Number 32 was the fair catch. That's Brian Edmonds, a backup fullback. Other action in the Big East this afternoon. Miami at Pittsburgh, Rutgers at West Virginia. Mountaineers coming off the big shutout at Syracuse last week. Temple visiting Syracuse today. So 14-0 Virginia Tech. Look at those numbers there. BC with the big edge. Balls at the 30. As a cloud cover starting to move in here in the Boston area. DeShays a super fake. Got outside. 40. Up to about the 43-yard line. Number 49, Terrence Wiggins saves a further gain to pick up a 14 for Maurice DeShazo. Well, you would think that you could blitz Virginia Tech because they're not that complicated, but the reason you can't blitz is because they run the option. You see, everybody sucked in with the fullback, and that let DeShazo get out on the outside and elude one tackle of Terrence Wiggins, a big play out on the perimeter. They're so concerned with stopping the fullback, Joe Swarm, they let the quarterback run free on that one. Frank Beamer's team's longest gain of the day, 14 yards. Nope. DeShazo play action with time. Sideline, Burt tight end, got it. And he's knocked out of bounds hard by Eric Shorter, number six. Shorter hit him and then stood over and looked at him like, hey, I got you. Nice play action by Maurice DeShazo. Look at the numbers and the progression from 92 to 93. You know, and the thing is, is his team has so much confidence in him now because he's been doing it consistently week after week this season. And, and it really started after the West Virginia game last year when he really struggled he got booed at his, in his home stadium he felt terrible he, he took a, a kind of a renewed approach to what he had to do to prepare himself as a quarterback and since that time he has been very very effective I think conscientious is a word that you want to use to describe DeShazo and his uh, emergence this year as one of the top quarterbacks and, and when you say that the numbers prove it and then some in terms of the numbers as they change to the country's number two this week in passing efficiency in the United States. You know, and the key thing now is his team has such great faith in him. They realize that it's not a flash in the pan. The fact that he's thrown 19 touchdown passes is is not a fluke. And, and even in a game like this, a big game where they're down 14 zip, his team has confidence that he can make the plays to get him right back in this football game. Second and about a chain link. At the BC 46. They're going to run it. Thomas, big hole. Stephen Boyd had to get him on the cutback. Joe Kamara there. Check that Michael Reed there, number 17. First down for the Hokies. There is a threat of rain this afternoon here in the Boston area. Game of five for Thomas. Dwayne Thomas is a, he's a big back. I mean, he's a guy that's not real flashy. He's over 200 pounds. And... You know, he's got more yards coming into this game, 805 coming into the game. That's more than any Tech back had had in a season since 1986. So he's off to a great individual year uh, for the Hokies. You see the tight end Burke in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Sanders outside here. Shazo checking off. The play clock was running down, and he calls timeout. It was down to one second on the play clock. So DeShazo showing some poise, calls time. BC up by two scores. We're back after these messages. We look at the numbers for Thomas, who's having a great year. DeShazo, his ability to bring his club back, what do you think? Well, I think that he can. And the point that I made earlier, I think that his team is at a point now where they have such confidence in him that they believe he can make the plays to get him back in this football game. The, the problem so far for Virginia Tech has been defensively, Glenn Foley has just outsmarted him and outplayed him at the line of scrimmage. Everything that they've tried to do pressure-wise, he has very coolly picked them apart doing so. The offense has actually moved the ball fairly decent. Freeman in the slot. Thomas, a hole. Vance's throw it, picks up five. Stephen Boyd was blocked, but reached out and made the uh, tackle. He was being blocked by Brian Edmonds, number 32. No surprise there, Miami up quickly at Pittsburgh. 
that last play we saw right there is the kind of play that Steve Zabo, the coordinator for BC, was very concerned about. How would his defense hold up to just the, the pounding, straight ahead, two back running offense at Virginia Tech? Play action. Mishesa all day. He can run, he can throw. He's going to run, picks up the first down and run out of bounds by Stephen Boyd. I tell you what, Boyd, and I hope he did his wind sprints this week. Well, the thing about Maurice DeShazo is he's not going to stay in the pocket very long. As soon as he sees it start to break down or he can't throw right on time, he's going to get out of there. Now, that time he didn't even have to leave the pocket when he did, but he feels that he can get out on the perimeter and make a play. And in this case, he runs for the first down. Good numbers for DeShazo running the ball thus far. Swarm and Thomas in the backfield. 14-0 BC. Swarm, boy, he pushes the pile down. Picks up about three or four. Dan Kerr, 91, makes the stop. Joe Swarm, senior, 5'11", 230. Out of Falls Church, Virginia. Went to George Marshall High School. Well, in order to run the option with any effectiveness, you have to make the dive to the fullback good. And that time, they did a nice job. Great push by the left side of the offensive line and the center, Jim Pine. And you pick up five yards, four yards, giving it to the fullback straight ahead. Tom Coughlin's done a great job turning this program right now. Second down and six at the 27. Four wideouts for DeShazo. They run the draw to Swarm, and he's hit at the 25. Brian Hallett, number 45, cuts him off after a gain of two. Wow, and that one looked like it was going to spring for big yardage. He, he ran that kind of like a fullback. He cut back to the inside. It looked like if he would have made an outside cut, he could have made a big play on this one. Take a look at it from down at ground level. They do a nice job selling the pass. And right there, he makes the cut back to the inside and gets stopped short of the first down. He had a lot of room to the outside if he makes that cut. He's looking for somebody to hit. Shotgun for Virginia Tech on this third and fourth and 29. And they'll stop this play right now. Dead ball. Both start on the offense. Referee today, Buddy Ward. Here at Boston College. And that weather forecast looking like it's going to come true. The clouds are really taking over. Yards allowed per game. Both of these teams doing fairly well. First penalty of the game. Virginia Tech, the most penalized team in the conference. BC, the least penalized. Third and nine. DeShazo, play action. Good time, flushed out. Buy some more time. Boy, did he buy time. He's got the whole offensive line in front of him. Crowd on its feet. It's like being in the street. Completes it to Freeman. Freeman hit hard right before he gets to the first down. A good stick by number 17, Mike Reed. And he's telling everybody, no, he didn't make it. And Freeman bought a big blow. He's hurt. Mike Mamula's doubled up upfield. Well, Mike Mamula is out of gas because he was chasing DeShazo all over the field. Now watch the creativity of Maurice DeShazo. Leaves the pocket. Look at Mamula. Thinks he has him dead to right. Uh-uh. Nope. Left grasping after air. Here comes DeShazo all the way back across the field, directing traffic. Look at the poise. Knows where everybody's at. And watch the hit at the end of this play. Michael Reed's going to come into your picture right up under the shoulder pads and stops him short of the first down. Here it is again. Another look at it. Freeman in somewhat of a vulnerable position going for the first down and Reed with a good stick. Freeman, I, I'm certainly not laughing, and I'm laughing at the Michael Reed me, me, me thing. He made a good stick. I mean, goodness gracious. Well, Virginia Tech can ill afford to lose Antonio Freeman. I mean, he's a guy that, that, that needs to make big plays for this offense, and the way he got hit there, he may have been a, a little bit of a problem with a rib. They have to get to the 21-yard line. Got a two tight end set. Swarm, second effort, probably gets it. Gonna be close. Hey, going back to that scramble by DeShazo, give credit to the offensive line, too, because they showed some good win there, too, and also keeping their heads about them to block for DeShazo. Take a look at this. This is gut check time, fourth and one. And watch the second effort. He gets hit behind the line. He doesn't have it right there. But look at the determination, the second effort to spin out of that first hit. 
and go for that first down mark. It's going to be close, but I think he gets the first down here. Swarm, five carries, 20 yards thus far in this ball game. 59 seconds to go, first quarter, 14-0 BC. Big measurement here. It's good enough for first down for Frank Beamer's Hokies. The drive continues. It began back at the 30-yard line. That coming off an 11-yard TD by Ivan Boyd to put BC up 14-0. Joe Swarms, his first year as a starter, he's a, he's a very workmanlike fullback, a guy who came as a walk-on in 89 and, and has really just kind of paid his dues and earned his spot as the starting fullback. No question that he's a very, very tough kid. That's what you have to be to play fullback in this offense. Tenth play of this drive with Freeman out. They've got two tight ends. Thomas powering down inside the 15-yard line. Boy, did he get some good blocks. Kevin Martin, number 86, the second tight end. Boy, he got a big-time lick. Right now in this drive, Virginia Tech doing a nice job taking control of the line of scrimmage and staying on the block. Dwayne Thomas, when he gets his shoulders square, you can see Joe Swarm said, hey, follow me, Dwayne. I will lead the way. And that's exactly what they do. They lead with the fullback. He gets a little bit of a block on Mamula. And Thomas, when he gets his shoulders square and turned up field, he's a load coming through there. Second and a short two. Pitch outside. There's room for Thomas. He runs through. He picks up the first down. Good job by the wideout Steve Sanders to get involved and throw a block there. Six-yard pickup, Mamula with the stop. Wow, what a great run by Dwayne Thomas there. That play looked like it was stopped, and he just used his strength. They give new meaning to selling out. 14-0 Boston College at the end of one. Back to Chestnut Hill, man. Second quarter action after these words from our local station. I'm trying to get back on the board here as we are about to start second quarter action. Dave Sims and Todd Blackledge with you in a, a game that basically is with third place up for grabs in the Big East Conference and a chance for a big bowl game postseason. Well, this has been a very impressive drive here for Virginia Tech. They, they got themselves down early, going down two touchdowns in that first quarter, but they put together a nice, powerful drive, running the football, Big, powerful offensive line, and Dwayne Thomas has been the primary recipient of this blocking. First and goal at the seven. DeShazo checking off at eight men in the box for BC. Penalty flag. Well, Maurice DeShazo is ball. trying. Ball start on the offense. He's trying to call a lot of plays on the line of scrimmage. That's why you see the backs moving up towards the line of scrimmage to hear what the call is. They're, they're calling a couple plays in the huddle. He's coming up to the line of scrimmage and trying to make the right call based on the defense. The only thing is it takes a little extra time, and some of his linemen are getting a little bit antsy, and that time they get the illegal motion. Big line for Tech, averaging 63 to 93. Swarm, here's DeShazo outside. Thomas turns the corner. And he's finally angled out of bounds after a one-yard gain. Joe Camara makes the stop and actually forces him out of bounds. The numbers after one in favor of Boston College. The rushing yardage, 81 for Virginia Tech. Look at the time of possession. Virginia well, that, Tech has had it, but they haven't done a lot. That shows it. you how meaningless that statistic is in, in football. I mean, it really doesn't mean anything when you, when you don't capitalize and score points. Boston College has a 14-point lead, and they haven't had the football uh, a third of the amount of time as Virginia Tech. That's exactly right. BC is going eight plays and four plays for their drives. Quarterback draw and opened up quickly. Touchdown! What a play by DeShazo! He jumped over number 25, Rob Clifford. That is one heck of a play. 11-yard run. It's 14-6 Boston College. Steve Zabo knew that they were going to run a quarterback draw. They've not shown it, but you're going to see. They get in the four wide receivers, the shotgun, and this is a designed quarterback draw. And watch, coming right at you, Maurice DeShazo takes one step back. He's going to get a little bit of a help block from the ref right there. The ref kind of gets a block on Brian Howlett. He cuts off that block and takes it into the end zone. Nothing like some speed and jumping ability. Maurice DeShazo is Ryan Williams. Extra point. Ooh. And it is in there. 44 in the special teams. Got kicked right in the stomach. Daryl Porter. It's 14-7 Boston College. We'll get back to Chestnut Hill after these messages.
Oh, he's got Virginia Tech on the board, and boy, he's getting great blocking today, Todd. Well, he's getting great blocking on this play. The best block's going to come by this guy, the official, the umpire. Rusty Spindle's going to get a block on Brian Hallett. You're going to see Hallett is going to read the draw, but he's not going to be able to make the play because the official's going to step right in the way. Watch, DeShazer's going to cut right off the official right here. The official obviously didn't do it on purpose, just couldn't get out of the way, and DeShazo, a nice heads-up play and getting the touchdown. Now, look at the end of the play. Wide receiver Michael Williams, number one. Check out the block he gets to kind of spring DeShazo at the very end of the play. DeShazo knows that's a huge touchdown, a huge touchdown for his team, getting him right back in this football game. Now it's up to the defense. Honest effort by the Whiteouts to get a piece of somebody. You don't always see that in football. Ransom and Watson get the kick a high end over ender. Watson takes it at about the 16. Hit hard immediately. Good tackle. Number 21, Brandon Simones out of Salem, Virginia, makes the stop after a 10-yard gain. Brandon's a backup rover. Rover back on the defensive unit for the Hokies. Well, the onus is really on the Virginia Tech defense now. That that that's the uh, that's the pressure. Phil Amation is the coordinator. He's very familiar with Glenn Foley. And you take a look at, I mean, the numbers are staggering comparing his first two years as a starter to these last two years. And of course, his fourth year is not anywhere near from being complete right now. Foley checking off. Mitchell in motion. One back is Campbell. They give it to Campbell. Brown run overruns the play and pays for it. Big run by Darnell Campbell. Getting up close to the 35-yard line. Cornell Brown, number 58, finally brings him down. Gain of nine. Well, we saw Dwayne Thomas running with power and strength. Here's Darnell Campbell, and you're right. Ken Brown overruns the play. He's able to cut it back in. His offensive line staying on their blocks and turns a, a play that looked like maybe a one- or two-yard gain into an eight-yard gain. Three tight ends. Blitz is picked up. Foley underthrows number 98, Gordon Laro. There was a blitz coming that time, and it worked effectively for Virginia Tech. I mentioned that Phil Elmation is the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. He was at Syracuse, so even though this is the first time Virginia Tech has ever played Boston College, the first time Frank Beamer has ever played Boston College, it's not the first time for Phil Elma Elmation. He is familiar with Glenn Foley and with this offense, and so far, Glenn Foley has, has just really masterfully run this offense. All kinds of movement for BC. Laro and Green set up in the eye. Foley cost timeout. Play clock was at four. Two timeouts remaining for both clubs. And look at Cornell Brown down on the field in that defensive huddle firing up Virginia Tech as Foley comes over to chat with things. Cornell getting it fired up for Virginia Tech. Hokies down 14-7. Back after these words from our local stations. Back to Boston College. Festive atmosphere on a beautiful afternoon, although it is clouding up just a little bit. This game living up to expectations. 14-7 Boston College. First minute, second quarter. They needed one, and the push looks like it's good enough for the first down. Darnell Campbell with the carry. And they do pick it up. This is an offensive line that has really matured over the course of this season. A couple new starters in there this year. Tommy Nalen, of course, the veteran center, but they've got a new right tackle in there. Number 70, Dan Ariskovich, filling in for the injured Ben Velishka at that key right tackle spot. Only the throw. Mitchell, caught. And the ball is down at about the 44-yard line. Gain of eight. Antonio Banks, the free safety, ends that play. We look forward to visiting Blacksburg next week. Syracuse, the Orangemen, will go down and take on the Virginia Tech Hokies at 9. Make that at noon. I'm reading noon, not 9. Noon. Start next Saturday here on the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Second down and two. Run towards the power. Campbell hit. George Del Rico there, number 41. They really load up, Todd, with these tight ends. They had two tight ends playing on the wing on the left side. Well, they really try to get you overmatched. They try to get more blockers than you have defenders on a side. That time it looked like they had a good setup, but great penetration on the inside, particularly from number 74, Jeff Holland, along that defensive front, got the good penetration across the line of scrimmage. 
And the boy Clarence Cannon there and his wide receiver. Split backs on this third and short. Foley. Time over the middle to Boyd. Good for the first down. Ken Brown, the linebacker, knocks him off. Del Rico there, too, but Ivan Boyd already with a scoring play. An 11-yarder to make it 14-0 late in the first quarter. Look at the numbers for Foley. Boyd, three catches for 66 of those yards. The big numbers for Glenn, but credit the offensive line. We talked about how you have to try to knock him out of his rhythm. So far, he's he's been able to get back in the pocket, stay there, read the defense, and throw on time. Seven men in the box, flea flicker. Foley got Boyd wide open, deep down the middle. Check that, it's Keith Miller. Down to the eight-yard line. Ivan Boyd's roommate, Keith Miller, an aspiring sportscaster, was wide open. First and goal for Boston College. 41 yards on the play. Well, they fooled the defense. It's a pressure defense. They show run. The free safety, Antonio Banks, comes flying up. You can see him, 27. Look at him turn and run. He knows he's beat. And the great thing Foley does here, he throws it right at the receiver. He doesn't try to lead him. He doesn't try to make a great throw. He throws it right at him, lets him catch the ball between the two defenders. Laro and Green. I set first and goal. The nine. Nice run by Green. He carries Kenny Brown and everybody down close to the goal line. No touchdown. Gordon Laro is just doing a magnificent block leading up through the hole. David Green with a good push also. This is one heck of a run. Well, Gordon Laro is again going to lead the block right on Ken Brown, and he keeps driving, and David Green keeps driving. And the two of them just take Kenny Brown and throw him all the way back into the end zone. I'll tell you what, you got to be happy for David Green. This is a guy who's been a backup. He was on defense last year, then back to offense, playing well today. Martin Corey, tackle. Kim, ooh, ooh, great stick. Call it a touchdown. Darnell Campbell kept fighting, and he got in for the touchdown. 14th TD of the season for Darnell, the leading scorer in the country. And BC's got a 20-7 lead. Frank Beamer has got to find some answers for his defense right now because Glenn Foley is just shredding them. Again, they go to the big back, the lead block by the fullback, and look at the strength of Darnell Campbell. Second effort gets it across the goal line. You're not going to stop Darnell Campbell short of the goal line at 220 pounds. Foley handles a high snap. David Gordon boots it through. Eight plays, 74 yards, three possessions, three scores for the Boston College Eagles. They lead it by the score of 21 to 7 with 11.08 left, second period. We're back after these messages. Fabulous afternoon for the BC Eagles. They had 11 first down snaps, 10 have been for at least eight yards. Darnell Campbell just scored, capping off another drive, nine plays, 74 yards, and Glenn Foley with All-American performance this afternoon. BC going for its sixth straight win. Again, you talk about Boston College and Tom Coughlin's offense. You talk about balance, mix, mixing the pass and the run, keeping a defense off balance. So far, BC, 10 runs and 11 passes. I mean, it doesn't get any more even than that with 21 offensive plays. Jeff Beckley, normally the punter, he's going to kick off this time. Going for the corner, and it's out of bounds at the eight-yard line. So Virginia Tech and that at least take the ball at the 35. Dead ball, kick off out of bounds by the kicking team. There are the numbers for Boston College. The Eagles scoring going dead 74 ball, yards. Dead ball, kick off out of bounds. Darnell Campbell, he had another touchdown. He's averaging two TDs a game, tops in the country. Virginia Tech and DeShazo. Starting from their best point of the field thus far today. They need some answers quickly. It's 11 08 left. Second quarter. Kushiza back to throw underneath to the tight end. Burke fumbles out of bounds after a wrap being wrapped up by Stephen Boyd. Virginia Tech trying to utilize the tight end a little bit more. John Burke, only five catches coming into the game so far today. Two big catches on the sideline. 
Tom Coughlin, the BC coach, we asked him earlier this week, what impresses him about Virginia Tech quarterback Maurice DeShazo? Here's a young man that goes from seventh in the conference in pass efficiency in 92 to second in the nation. He makes a lot of plays, whether the ball's tucked under his arm, whether he's scrambling, whether he throws off the scramble or keeps it. He's the key to their offense. Uh, he's the guy that's making this thing work. Renal White with a good run up the middle for seven. Michael Reed prevents further damage for BC. That's a first down for Virginia Tech. They're into BC territory at the 49. The last couple series for Virginia Tech, they've moved the ball very effectively. Their offensive line is really doing a nice job controlling things at the line of scrimmage. They just can't score fast enough to keep up with BC right now. That 10th first down. Big hole opens up left side to Shazo. Out of bounds. Chased by Boyd. That'd be close to the first down. Nine plus. Nine on the money, as a matter of fact. The ball's at the 40-yard line. Frightening sight with DeShazo. Looks right and then looks back left, and he has all that room. You know, one of the reasons Virginia Tech has had so much success on offense this year is their continuity. They, they've been very fortunate that they haven't had major injuries with their offensive team. They've been able to start the same 11 on offense every game except one when they lost their one offensive lineman. That'll be flags all over that, that play. That'll come back. Legal motion against Virginia Tech. They are some big individuals on that offensive line, Todd. They average 6'3", 293. Chris Berry, the, the tight tackle there, he's the only lineman that has missed a game, had an injured thumb and had to sit out the one ball game against Maryland. But other than that, they have been consistent in who they've been able to play. And I'll tell you what, that lends to success offensively when you have the same people in there working together week in and week out. Four wideouts on this second and six for DeShazo. Looking quickly, got a man over the middle, knocked down, nice play. He was going Tim Morbido knocked it down. He's going for number 17, Brian Still. Still was open. And it would have been good enough for a first down around the 35-yard line. Wouldn't be surprised to see BC come after DeShazo on this one. Come with a little blitz here on a third down, definite passing situation. Four wideouts for Virginia Tech. They do come. DeShazo over the middle. Oh, what a hit! Picked off. The pick by number six, Eric Shorter. But Brian still will rue the moment he went over the middle on that play. Oh, brother. DeShazo hung his receiver out to drive under blitz. And here's what happened. Well, they definitely came after him. They brought Howlett and Boyd. He gets hit low by Howlett. He, he wasn't able to step through that ball, and the ball came up in the air on him. You can see he hung out the receiver a little bit coming across the middle. He took the shot and a nice tip ball drill by Eric Shorter. And when you're a quarterback, when the ball gets tipped, normally something bad happens. And very seldom does something good happen when it gets tipped. Yeah, best starting spot for the Eagles. That was DeShazo's fifth interception of the season. Big running room. Campbell across the 40-yard line. Antonio Banks brings him down. 11-yard, make that a 10-yard game. Boy, he broke through that first hit. This is a good uh, tackling ball club, generally talking about Virginia Tech, Todd, but that's a terrific run by Campbell. Well, and they play so many guys so close to the line of scrimmage. They've got eight guys right up close, so if you get through one tackle, and you can see right there he slips through the arm tackle of George Del Rico, you've got good running room, and that's the free safety having to come off from about 12 yards downfield to make the tackle. So once you get through that initial line, uh, there's some good running room. Picks up the first down, three-quarters length of the football. And first down for Tom Coughlin's Eagles. Tom looks like he's going to use the entire playbook today. And so far, good reason, because everything seems to be working. 
Well, they're definitely keeping Virginia Tech off balance right now. That, that's the key. They're mixing the pass and the run beautifully. They're keeping that defense guessing. Into two green. Not a lot going left side. Loose ball, loose ball. Looks like Virginia Tech got it. And indeed they do. Big turnover for the Hokies. Boy, did they need that. Oh, you're right. They needed that in a big way. I mean, they have not been able to slow Boston College down. The only way to get back in this thing right now to get a turnover, and you can see Tom Coughlin knows that was a costly error by David Green. Hank Coleman with the fumble recovery. Take a look at this down at ground level. You can see Green's got He's carrying a little bit loosely right there, and as he tries to go through the bodies, the ball just slips out. Never really had great control over it, and he does not have the football at that point, and a big turnover for Virginia Tech. Balls at the BC 39. Best starting spot now for DeShazo and company, down 21-7. Whoa, what a crowd drawn by Dwayne Thomas. Steve Boyd stood him up and then got a lot of help. Stephen Boyd, the number one tackler in the Big East Conference, coming into today's game. He had a nine-tackle lead over Pitt's Tom Tumbleton. Well, they get a bead in. They know they're going to the tailback. And you can see Boyd is across the line of scrimmage. It was a run blitz. He stunted with the running play. He was across the line of scrimmage, waiting, unblocked, and waiting for Dwayne Thomas. Boyd out of Valley Stream High School in Valley Stream, New York. Fake the pitch. DeShazo, home run ball. Down the left sideline and overthrows number four, Cornelius White, with coverage by Joe Camara. Good pressure by Teddy Page that time. Got right up into Maurice DeShazo's face. He had to throw that ball a little bit early. Pittsburgh watching Miami put up its third touchdown. That does not hold well for Maryland. Duke, which had its coach resign, or will resign at the season. Frank Beamer's club right now, third down and nine at the 40. Another blitz situation for Boston College. Here they come again. Four wideouts. Tech picks it up. DeShazo's got room. Throws it down the sideline for Williams. Knocked away. What a play by number 17, Michael Reed. Michael Williams had the step. But Reed, out of Salesianum High School in Wilmington, Delaware, the junior, comes up big again. Well, you can see Maurice again. The problem when he gets out of the pocket, he makes big plays. And Michael Reed does a nice job recovering, turning and finding the football and getting a hand up in there and stopping the completion to Michael Williams. Excellent recovery by Michael Reed. Keith Miller deep for this Robbie Colley punt. Penalty flag on the play. First punt of the ballgame. Miller at the nine with the fair catch. 31-yard punt. Flag back at the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. You know, it's tough when you're a defensive back to condition yourself to when the quarterback scrambles to just maintain your coverage and stay there. But that time, Michael Reed made a veteran move doing that because Maurice DeShazo got out of the pocket, was trying to direct traffic and hit a deep pass. And Reed was right where he needed to be. Five yard penalty. Robbie Colley will have to kick again. He's averaging 39 yards a kick. Seventh in the Big East Conference. Miller deep to receive. He's back at the 10. 21-7. Boston College over Virginia Tech with 8.41 to go here in the second quarter. Collett lays into this one. And he got too much of it. Two yards deep into the end zone. And a nice decision by Tom Coughlin because rather than take the uh, or ignore the penalty and start on the 10-yard line, you make him kick it again and you just bet on the fact that this time he'll get too much on it, put it into the end zone. Now your starting position is the 20-yard line instead. Picks up about 12 yards on the exchange. I'm surprised Colley didn't go for corner action. All right, what kind of uh, sequence do you look for here from Boston College? Well, I would not change anything that they're doing. They're mixing it wonderfully right now on offense. Big sense, Todd Blackledge with the BC on a roll. Here's Foley throwing, got a man there to tight end, hit hard. That's Brent Givens. It's only the third catch of the season for Brent Givens. 
who's six foot seven, 230 pounds out of Darien, Connecticut. 29 yard gain. It's only his third catch, as you said, Dave, but every one of them have been a big play. This is the same play that VC started the game with, only they hit Givens this time. You could see Foley looking off the free safety to his left. That opened up the space to throw to his big tight end, Givens. He's six foot seven. That's a huge target running down the middle of the field and quite a mismatch on a smaller safety. Foley, 10 of 12, 213 yards and a touch. He's shredding Virginia Tech. They threw that one away, a wise decision. As Pete Mitchell was covered quite well in the flat by number 14, Torian Gray. Stay with us at halftime. Take a look back at happenings in the conference last week. Feature on politics on the gridiron. And, of course, stats and highlights. That play right there, Virginia Tech was able to get enough pressure on Foley to force the early throw. They've not been able to do that very much in this first half so far. He's pretty much had his way because he's been able to throw on rhythm against this defense. Foley coming into the game, 65% pass in the previous five games. Cornell Brown, Hank Coleman. They stopped Campbell this time. No game. You can see Virginia Tech on defense. They're just trying to get some of the emotion back into the game, trying to get some of that flair that they play with uh, for the most part. But the reason that it's tough is because Boston College is doing such a good job mixing the pass and run that it keeps this defense off balance. This is a very aggressive, come at you defense. But when, when they're mixing it up so much, it causes them to be a little bit hesitant. BC, four for four on third down. Make it five for five. Keith Miller down to the 39-yard line. Antonio Banks stops him. 12-yard gain. BC came into the game completing 52% on third down opportunities. Well, it's a three-wide receiver set. Look how they spread the defense. Now, right there in the middle of the zone, Keith Miller does a nice job finding the hole and sitting right there, giving the target a nice target to his quarterback, Glenn Foley. Keith Miller with three catches for 53 yards, and Foley in the offense getting in the huddle and getting right out. Very crisp this afternoon. Here's another audible against the blitz. They pick it up all day for Foley. Got a man dead down the middle. Boy, saw the hit coming. Catches it at the nine-yard line. First and goal, Boston College. 29-yard pickup. The roommates on fire. Well, the biggest thing Glenn Foley is doing right now is we take a look at Antonio Banks, the free safety on the ground. Look at him look to the left. All he's doing is throwing the free safety off. He's making the free safety commit to the other side, and when he does recover, it's too late, and there's Boyd with the big catch down the field. That free safety has so much room to cover in this defense. When you have eight people committed around the line of scrimmage, the free safety has to roam a lot of territory. And Glenn Foley doing a great job with his eyes right now, looking him off to the left and throwing back to the other side. Antonio Banks, the injured player, it was Boyd seeing the collision coming, catching and embracing himself and putting his head down. Banks takes the shot to the, to the stomach area, had the wind knocked out of him. Boyd, what an afternoon. Four catches, 95 yards and a touchdown. And as much as anything, Banks has to be a little bit frustrated right now because he's been caught in that predicament maybe three or four times already in this ball game by Glenn Foley, using his eyes, looking him one way, coming back and throwing it the other way. You see the ball just outside the 10-yard line. Nice time remaining, second quarter, BC threatening again. Green, left side, breaks a tackle inside the five. Saving tackle by number 20, Dwayne Knight. Virginia Tech being put through the shredder this afternoon. David Green back in there after the fumble. You can see he's going to hold on to it this time. Both arms around the football as he gets around the bodies. Look at him, covering up the football, keeping those legs moving. Excellent, hard nose running in there by David Green. Laro and Campbell in the backfield. Campbell, the leading scorer in the country. Guess who's gonna get the ball if they run? Three tight ends in the ball game for BC. Campbell gets the call, finds the end zone. Touchdown, Boston College! Torian Gray was run right by Darnell Campbell. Campbell's second score of the afternoon. He's got 15 on the season. He's right on his average, two scores a game. 
Well, again, look at Torian Gray. He's a free safety. Here comes 225 pounds of fullback running right at you. Darnell Campbell had a head of steam, got good leverage, got his hat underneath the pads of Torian Gray, and it's an easy touchdown for the Eagles. BC Eagles wearing out Virginia Tech. Gorgeous point after on the money. So in cloudy Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, 6-10 left in the first half. It's Boston College 28, Virginia Tech 7. We're back after these messages. Kimball, his 15th touchdown of the season, second on the day, gives BC the 28-7 lead. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Football Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or any other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference is prohibited. Boston College coming into this game today, the number one ranked pass offense in the Big East Conference, and you're seeing a little taste of it. Over the last six games, Glenn Foley has just been spectacular today. 12 of 15, 254 yards and a touchdown already, 21.2 yards per completion. And that, and this doesn't get any better than that for a quarterback, and part of that reason is the balance. Mix the run in the pass, makes him that much more effective. Lakers kickoff, popped it up, see if they get a cheapie. And all white gets it for Virginia Tech. Draws a crowd at the 35-yard line. Return of 11 yards. Marcus Allen, number 37, with the tackle for Boston College. Maurice DeShazo's got a big job in front of him. 6.02 to go in the second quarter. He and the Hokies down 28-7. Well, the important thing for Maurice right now is to not panic. Now, obviously, they've not been in many games like that this year. They've been the team that's been out in front. They've been the team that's been controlling the game. They have to stick with what they've been doing all year. Nicely done on the option. They get up close to the 45-yard line. Eric Shorter brings down to Shazo. Unfortunately for Maurice, he's going to have to do quite a bit of it here in the rest of the game, possibly without his best big play guy, Antonio Freeman, who has not returned to action yet. Ryan still still in there, number 17, replacing Freeman. Second down and two. DC with 327 yards total offense, to buck 57 for Virginia Tech. Ooh. And a good job, a very lucky for Dwayne Thomas to hold on to that one. Ted Page was in his lap early. Number 90. We have a very poor exchange here between DeShazo and Thomas. Take a look at it. He never gets control of the ball, and Ted Page is right into the backfield. Again, it's penetration. He gets inside the block of the guard, Damian McMahon, and causes a big play in the backfield, and Virginia Tech's lucky that they still have the football. Two back set. Three wide outs, the tight end in the slot is Burke. They're going to run it with Swarm and not a lot going on there. Going to come up short on this one. Again, you've got to defend the fullback to stop a team that runs the option. They're going to call for a measurement here, but I think he's about a half a yard short. Tell you what, I think he's got it by about half the ball, to be honest with you. Let's see who comes out right. See whose eyes are better, I guess. Freeman's got a bad ankle. There's a possibility he could return slightly sprained. Suffered earlier in the ball game. Got it by half the ball. Good eyes, partner. I'll tell you what, I don't think Antonio Freeman is going to come back. If he was able to come back at all, he would be back by now. Good they point. would have had plenty of time to retape him, to take him in and do whatever they needed to do. He's over there with a towel on his neck right now. It, it's obviously much more serious than what they think. You bet, and that's a big loss. Nine touchdowns, 21.6 yards per catch. Big loss for Tech. They're down 28-7. 4.15 to go in the first half. Outside to Edmund. Ooh, big stick by Joe Camara. Out of Mattapan, Massachusetts, Ryan Edmonds. Back up fullback with the reception. Little Joe comes up with a big load, 5'9", 169. There's Edmonds, and he's 5'10", 233. 
And again, a, a little bit of a change in the things that Virginia Tech's doing. That's the first reception for either fullback for Virginia Tech this year. Ryan Edmonds making the catch out of the backfield. A little bit of a break in tendency. Ball at the BC 46. Edmonds not good enough block to Shinzo. Throws it up intended for Cornelius White, but an incompletion. Good pressure by Mike Mamula, number 59. Edmonds did not get the block on Mamula. Wrecked that play. Well, I'll tell you what, DeShazo maybe would have been able to cut inside his block of his fullback. He tried to go outside, and that made it tough on his fullback because when he flashed outside, the fullback didn't know where his quarterback was, and Mamula was able to get right up in the face. Sometimes you got to help your blocker out, let him take him one way, and you go the other way. Option pitch, Thomas No. Eric Shorter, yet another big play by the secondary for Boston College. Well, you can't defend the option any better. First, they tackle the fullback. Then they make the quarterback pitch and watch Shorter. Gets inside the block of the wide receiver, Cornelius White, and makes a good open field tackle on the tailback. I mean, you, you just cannot draw it up any better if you're a defensive coordinator, Steve Zabo. Crowd getting into this one, 32,000 strong here at Alumni Stadium. Virginia Tech converted on a fourth and one earlier in the game. They go for their second. Quarterback drives more of a scramble. The Shinzo picks it up and then some and does his sport thing and eats some turf before Kamara rips his head off. Good job by DeShazo. Picks up the first down for Tech. Well, excellent awareness of what he needed for the first down here. You can see it's He's kind of waiting, waiting, allow the rush to come upfield, and he was had designs on running that from the get-go. He wasn't going to throw that football, but he wanted to allow it to happen, let the play develop, and he knew exactly what he needed for the first down. Joe Swarm and Tommy Edwards in the back of the set as the clock winds down. Tommy Edwards takes a pop penalty flag on the play, too, probably a hold. Brian Hallett, number 45, with the stick. Holding on the offense. Things slipping away just a little bit for Frank Beamer's club. Down 28-7 with 229 Holding on the first half. by the offense. 10 yards, spot of the foul. Replay, second down. Virginia Tech, five penalties to just one for BC. Playing to form as Virginia Tech's the most penalized team in the Big East. 77 penalties coming into 34 for Boston College. Our halftime activities coming up a little bit later. Stay with us for that. Last week in the Big East. Politics on the gridiron should be interesting. The stats and highlights. And most of that a BC show. First and 20 at the 47. The Shazer underneath to the tight end. Look out. He gets hit. That's Burke, the tight end, laid out by Eric Shorter. Third catch for Burke, and he never saw Shorter coming. Yeah, Burke had no chance on this. Normally, you think uh, the defensive back's going to get the worst of this, but the, he had deception on his side. Burke turns, boom, right into his legs is Eric Shorter. He had no chance. I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a tough, tough shot to take because you're... you're unprotected and you're totally vulnerable and Burke took a good shot there on the legs and they can ill afford to lose him too man. that's a, a key guy in their run offense best blocking tight end in the biggie says his coach inside of two minutes the Shazo look to throw the home run ball couldn't do it first sack of the day Ted Page comes up big for Boston College Well, Ted Page was able to get the sack because DeShazo went to throw the ball and, and decided against it. He's going to double clutch here. Watch. He's in the pocket. Now he's ready to throw, and he changes his mind. And when he changes his mind, he's still in the pocket, and Page is able to slip off his block and come up with the big sack. Four wideouts. Ted Page. In the game. Four wideouts for Virginia Tech in his third and 20. Flushed out by Mamola. Reverses field, going to pick up some blocks. He can set and throw. Throws it downfield. White is there. What a catch. First down, Virginia Tech at the 12. 
What a big time play to Shazo to Cornelius White. 36 yards. Well, we talked about it at the top of the show. This is why DeShazo is so dangerous, when he leaves the pocket and creates a play on his own, and that's exactly what he does. He rolls out, he starts to his right, then he decides, no, I'm going to go back to the left, pick up a couple blocks from my offensive lineman. Now watch him direct traffic. Go deep. Take the pattern deep. Break off your route and go deep. And I'll tell you what, the guy's been doing this all year. It's not luck because they practice it, and he does it every game. Balls at the 12. Three wide outs. And Edwards. Shazo stitches to Edwards. He drives the real good drive. Look at this! Tommy Edwards backs his way down to the three-yard line. That's outstanding. <laughs> wow. He drove Stephen Boyd. You can drive my car, said the Beatles. My goodness. Final 22 seconds. Tommy Edwards. Well, they run the option. DeShazo holds it to the last minute. Now, look at the balance of Edwards. He's not down. He keeps driving the legs. And you can see just the lower body strength of the backup tailback, Tommy Edwards. That's an outstanding effort, keeping his balance. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Tommy Edwards took Dan Kerr, number 91, for a ride there. Inches short of a first down. Tommy Edwards, a legacy player at Virginia Tech, is dead. Ken wore number 33 at Virginia Tech. Tommy's named after his late uncle who played at Tech. He died at the young age of 21. This is a situation where Maurice DeShazo really has to exert himself But in this part. They've called timeout here. They have another one left. But with 22 seconds, you've got to be smart what you do with the football. What kind of play do you look for here, Todd? I would, with the ball in the right hash here, I would do something where you would sprint the quarterback to the left, give him the, the run throw option going to the wide side of the field. Out of town numbers. Can't say we're shocked at that. West Virginia bidding to remain unbeaten. Big showdown coming with Miami. McHugh's finally on the board after being shut out the last two weeks. Florida State gearing up for Notre Dame on the 13th. Battles of Tobacco Road. Florida should breeze there. And your Nittany Lions up by four in Indiana, Tuck. Our score here, 28-7 Boston College. Last 22 seconds, first half. Edwards in motion. Thomas dies. Second ever touchdown, Virginia Tech. So Tech right back in it, and the crowd of 1,500 who made the journey from Blacksburg, pretty excited about that, and John Burke back in the game makes a big block. Well, they had him back in the ball game. The tight end, they go power eye formation. They get to the deep back, Dwayne Thomas. He dives, and at that point, it didn't look like he was going to get in, but there was no one to meet him. When he came back down to the ground, he was able to just bounce into the end zone once he hit the ground. Wayne Thomas, his ninth rushing TD. Tenth on the season. Extra point by Ryan Williams is good. 12 play, 64 yard drive capped off by that man, Dwayne Thomas. Take a look at the blocking on the left side here. Damian McMahon, the tight end, Burke. Look at the fullback. Look at the pulling guard, number 51, Chris Malone. They do a great job crashing the side down on the left, and Dwayne Thomas extending into the end zone. Great to have you with us here at Alumni Stadium on a perfect football afternoon. Even though the clouds have come over, it's still beautiful to play football. Crisp, cool afternoon just outside of Austin. Dave Sims and Todd Blackledge with you. Good ball game, a lot of scoring. 28-14, Boston College over Virginia Tech. Well, I expected a lot of scoring coming into this ball game. I expected both teams to, to be able to move the ball fairly well. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that Virginia Tech has been able to, uh, to to not really do anything against Glenn Foley here in the first half. They've not been able to disrupt his timing, his rhythm at all, and credit the offensive line at BC. They've done a great job protecting the quarterback, and they've kept him off balance. And that, that's been the biggest key for him, keeping this Tech defense off balance. 
And Yano Watson, number four, deep to receive. Fourth in the Big East Conference, and boy, that looks crushed. Ryan Williams out of Suffolk, Virginia. We had the approval of the Big East and the NCAA to wear a specially fitted kicking shoe. Half of his right foot severed in a lawn mowing accident as a youngster. Reminds you of Tom Dempsey with that shoe, and he got into all of that one. I wonder if that's one of those Auburn footballs, <laughs> the ones filled with helium. <laughs> of course, Jackie Sherrill making the news again a couple weeks ago with that question or accusation, however you want to consider it. DC taking over with 19 seconds to go. Let's see how they play it. They're going to run three. He picks up a big game. Picks up 14 on the play. BC calls timeout. They have one remaining. You know, the interesting thing here, Virginia Tech coming into this game had the best uh, statistic in terms of their opponents only completing 45% of the passes against them. However, they've given up huge yardage. They've been given up 237 yards a game, and that's been the case in this first half. Big pass plays by Glenn Foley. What a first half put up by both of these clubs. BC, Glenn Foley has been outstanding. Virginia Tech got back into this game. Tom, Dave Sims, and Todd Blackledge upstairs, and fabulous half by Glenn Foley. The timing, everything's been working well in your passing game. Well, that has, but uh, it, we got a long way to go. This team averages 37 points a game, and that was scary drive right at the end. The Shazo, you can see the scramble effect, boy. It's it drives you crazy. Coach, you talked about the importance of reading and recognizing the blitz. So far in the first half, you've done a nice job recognizing what they're trying to do defensively. So far, that has happened. Yeah, there's pressure there. There's a lot of pressure. There's Almost 60% is blitz, and uh, we've done a pretty good job of picking it up, but we got a whole half to go. We're going to have to make a lot of things happen. We're going to have to contain the quarterback better. We're going to have to tackle better, and uh, it, it, this game is, is far from over. Okay, Coach, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Tom Coughlin, thank you for your time. Good half here at Alumni Stadium. Eagles lead the Hokies 28-14. That's the end of our first half. We'll be back with our halftime activities after these words from our local stations. Frank Beamer, head coach of the Virginia Tech Hokies as it's starting to get really cloudy here. We may get some rain later on. Halftime stats. Look at the number of passing yardage owned by BC, 252 to 90. Total yards, 338 to 221. How about that average yards per play for BC? 10.8 yards a pop. That is remarkable time of possession in favor of Virginia Tech but again BC has been quite proficient in some quick scoring drives. Well BC has done it both on the ground and in the air and you take a look both quarterbacks having a good half but Glenn Foley 252 yards and again why has he been so effective as much as anything the mixture in that first half BC had 31 plays 16 runs 15 passes. Freeman walking a little bit better since the last time we saw him late in the first half. Ball club giving him some encouragement. It's not quite that cold up here, folks. It's in the 50s. <laughs> there is a little bit of a breeze. Miami rolling at halftime over the Pitt Panthers. West Virginia trying to do likewise to Rutgers. And as the other action rolls in, we can tell you that Virginia Tech We'll start the second half. Getting the kickoff from Boston College. Penn State has opened it up. On Indiana. Here's Glenn Foley. Just a marvelous first half. Saw Glenn yesterday at a local deli wearing his Phillies cap, his favorite team. Maurice DeShazo. He needs to get it going and turn it up a couple of notches for Virginia Tech. And they're going to get the ball first. Dwayne Thomas deep to receive. The kickoff from Brent. Brent Bleeker. Redshirt freshman out of Stewart, Florida. 
Again, they've been going with that high pooch kick. It's been somewhat effective. They've come very close to uh, turning this into a big play. I'd expect to see that high pop up again. Kick it high. Anyway, to the sideline, and Thomas lets it go out of bounds. A wise decision since the ball went out at the 15-yard line. Dead ball. Kick off out of bounds by the kicking team. You may ask, why are they doing this? Well, all season, the kickoff coverage team has been an Achilles heel for Boston College. That was the probably the reason more than anything that they lost the game to Northwestern back early in the season. Dwayne Thomas coming into this ball game, the number one kick returner in the conference. They just don't want to give him a chance to make a big play. First carry by Thomas. Doesn't have much room to run. Brian Hallett, number 45, is there. Van Kerr, also involved in the play. Thomas on the afternoon. 14 carries, just 32 yards, and he certainly is the man to stop. He came into the game averaging 100.6 yards per game. Second down and nine. The draw. Edmonds. A few, Stephen Boyd stops him. Stephen Boyd, out of Valley Stream, New York, 6'1", 234, as active as they get at that linebacker position. Well, they're trying to run the draw behind Jim Pine. You can see he gets those big paws on Tim Morabito, and he's able to hold him off just enough time to let the back get through there. Jim Pine, the only player from Virginia Tech that's from the state of Massachusetts. Saw him having dinner with his mom and dad last night. This has got to be a big thrill for him playing up here in his home state. A blitz to Shazo Rolls. Throws behind the receiver. Tennant from Cornelius White. BC is held. Eric Shorter covering for Boston College. Well, BC wanted to blitz to Shazo in definite pass situation. You can see they get the pressure. Now the free safety makes him throw it. And, and Steve Zabo said, if we can get pressure on him and blitz him, we think we can get him to throw it where he doesn't want to. That was a case right there where he kind of took a chance. Lucky to get an interception. Second punt by Robbie Colley. Taken by Kenyatta Watson at the 31. Looking for the wall. It's not fair. Cornelius White makes the tackle. 37, make that 36-yard punt. A seven-yard return for Robbie Colley. Averaging 39 a kick. 28-14 our score. We're back after these messages. Touchdowns. We were talking to Frank Beamer the other day. What is his prescription to stop Glenn Foley, the Eagles quarterback? So I think we got to make him move his feet. We got to get him out of a rhythm. Uh, we, we, he can't go back there and throw in a rhythm. I, I think if he do, uh, it's just it's a slow death. Uh, you know, he's too good. The, the scheme is too good. The offensive scheme's too good. The receivers are too good. The protection is too good. I, I think we got to do some things to try to make him move his feet or be in his face when he is throwing or make him uh, dodge a little bit. I think that's the key to the ball game. Good game by David Green. George Del Rico has to make the stop. You see the blitz is picked up, Todd. Brown blitz, and they picked him up in the backfield. Seven-yard game. Well, Virginia Tech is going to blitz just about every down. The only down that they haven't been a high blitz team is on first down, but this time they come right after him on first down. And once you block the blitz, if you can recognize it and block it, there's some big gains to be had because everybody's up around the line of scrimmage. Second and three at the 44. BC with three wide outs for the look on this play. Well, he's got time. Going for the home run ball deep down and right sideline. Overthrows Ivan Boyd. Scott Jones, number nine, covering for Tech. Well, that's a nice job covering by Scott Jones. That time, Glenn Foley read the blitz. He read the bump and run coverage, and he went to the takeoff to his receiver, Ivan Boyd. That's man to man against bump and run coverage. And Scott Jones did a nice job running right with the receiver, making it difficult for Foley to, to stick one in there. BC's five for five on third downs. And only one of them was longer than three yards to go. Here's Foley in third and three. Lee Mitchell into Virginia Tech territory, first down. Torian Gray 
knocks him out of bounds, and Foley continues to roll. Three catches, 51 yards for Pete Mitchell. Well, they go on the quick count. It's just a little turnout, and by the time the defense reacts, that's the free safety, Torian Gray, coming from way out in the middle of the field. It's too late. They pick up the first down. They go on a quick count. They just get him right out into the pattern. A quick throw by Foley. Easy first down. 109 career catches for Pete Mitchell. Foley well, wants to throw again. The blitz is picked off. And an overthrow intended for Greg Grace, number 20. Hank Coleman getting up slowly in the backfield, number six. When you blitz as much as a team like Virginia Tech does, what you're counting on, what you're betting on, is that, yeah, we're going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. And we realize that we may not stay with the receivers that long, but what we're betting on is we're going to get to your quarterback before you have a chance to hurt us. That has not been the case in the first half. Virginia Tech has come after him, but Foley has had the time. You hear him changing the play line of scrimmage. Back to throw with terrific protection. Over the middle. Got a man. Good for first down to the 35-yard line to Keith Miller. Pick up a 14. Stacy Henley has to bring him down. BC driving again. And again, you really have to tip your hat to the offensive line. Now he's keeping his backs in to help. They're checking for linebackers that might be coming, but just a beautiful pocket in there. And Foley has the poise to stay right there and wait for the receivers to come open. Fine day for Keith Miller out of Clinton, Maryland. 23 catches on the season. Let's pick up and run right by him. Gain of two. Cornell Brown, you see number 58. Rich Del Rico there. Good job by Del Rico to get there before that play exploded on uh, Virginia Tech. Well, one thing they do, they put their linebackers right up in the line of scrimmage. You can see George Del Rico's right up there, got his hands on the center, Tom Nalen, right across the line of scrimmage from him. He takes on him, he takes on the fullback Gordon Laro leading the play and is still able to come off and make the play. A lot of teams put their linebackers three and four yards off the ball. Look at the Virginia Tech linebackers. They're right up there maybe two yards off the football. Ball at the 36, Foley. Throwing to play to Mitchell. Mitchell breaks a tackle. He's got a first down inside the 25. Beating the coverage of Stacey Henley, a 12-yard pickup. Masterful drive here by Foley and BC. Well, I'll tell you what, it just helps so much to have a tight end who can operate in open spaces. That's what Glenn Foley has. There's no reason or no wonder that Pete Mitchell is his primary target. Mitchell just has a great feel for running against zone defenses, finding the open areas in the middle of the field. Laro and Green in the backfield. Reading the bump and run again. He's audible into a throw. Slant pattern. Man is there. Knockdown, saving a touchdown. Greg Grice with the intended receiver. Good play by Scott Jones. Got out of Bristol, Virginia. Well, Virginia Tech has lost their best cover guy in Tyrone Drakeford. He broke a bone in his ankle against Rutgers. Scott Jones in there and makes a great play. And it's it's a you know that was a play where. Virginia Tech really needed him to come down with that interception. I think Torian Gray, the free safety, came over to help and actually knocked the ball out of his hands. Arnell Campbell, the change of pace, drive it up the middle. Torian Gray's there, 98 is there too. Waverly Jackson. You know, we talk so much about Jim Pine, the center for Virginia Tech. Tommy Nalen's a pretty fair center at BC. You see him come off the block of the nose tackle and get onto the middle linebacker. He wasn't able to keep his feet, but he was able to get the, the contact downfield enough for Darnell Campbell to pick up a decent game. 28-14, Boston College on the move, 35 at the 17. Here's Foley, flushed out, dumps it behind. Miller makes a good catch at the 15. That will not be enough for a first down. And I'll tell you what, that's something we haven't seen this entire game. They get great pressure on Glenn Foley up the middle. They force him to get out of the pocket. And when he has to leave the pocket, he's not nearly as effective. They made him move his feet. And then they came up with the big play, stopping it short. I'll tell you what, if, he, if Virginia Tech needed a play to stop him on a third down, that was it. There's a 32-yard field goal attempt by David Gordon. He's four for six in field goals this year. Fourth in kick scoring in the Big East Conference. Foley with the handle. 
And it's no good. And if there's an Achilles heel to the BC club, it has been the kicking game. We showed you Gordon in our open missing what could have been a game winner at Northwestern. 9.48 to go, third period. Austin College leads at 28-14. We're back after these words from our local stations. There's David Gordon trying to figure out how he missed the 32-yard field goal attempt. That makes him now four for seven on the season. Well, you can see Gordon just is not going to follow through completely. He kind of leaves that leg hanging out there, and the ball just kind of stays out to the left on that one. Didn't get a great follow through, did not make real good solid contact on it. And you can see, I mean, he knows that was a critical miss for him and just hasn't been able to, to quite get over the hump this year. Here's Tech's second possession of the second half. Edmonds and Thomas. Edmonds pushing, pushing, and that's about it. Picks up three. Ted Page, number 90 among the BC players there to stop them. Chris Sullivan, 93, is there also. Join us next week as we'll take a trip to Blacksburg, Virginia. To see these same Hokies, this time taking on the Syracuse Orangemen. Lane Stadium, noon start next Saturday. The Hokies football conference network. Shazel, flanker screen. Pretty good game to Brian Still. Mike Momola with the tackle. Six-yard pickup. That'll force a third and one. Look at John Burke on this. He's going to just make contact, and then he's going to release. He's leading the play on this quick screen. And look at the cut block. That's twice in the ball game he's done it. That's picture-perfect technique by the tight end. Make contact, pause a little bit, come out and get a good cut block on the DB's legs. There you go with the two tight end setup. Third and one. Virginia Tech down, 28-14. Thomas got the first down. Fights ahead across the 30 to about the 32. Brian Hallett stops him. 45, number 45, Brian Hallett. Help from Stephen Boyd, number 50. Well, when you get Virginia Tech in a situation like this, it's not too hard to guess what they're going to do. They're going to give it to the tailback. Now, here's Boyd taking on the block of the pulling guard. That's Chris Malone, number 51. Kind of lets him get into his legs and isn't able to come off and make the play. Howlett, the other linebacker, is the guy who eventually makes the stop. Boyd in on 10 tackles this afternoon. Everybody changing up at the line of scrimmage. Play clock at six. They get it off. Blitz picked up. Page is there, got him with the sack. Second sack of the afternoon. Ted Page, 6'4", 255, the senior out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. A loss of eight. Well, Ted Page is a guy who is just slowly working his way back in. He's, he's now starting his third game in a row, and he's a, a very good athlete, a very good pass rusher. And I'm telling you, if you got a quarterback, it doesn't matter how good of a scrambler he is, if you can get good pressure up the middle, that makes it much more difficult. When you get the pressure on the outside, quarterback can step up and then break to the outside. Pressure right in his face makes it tough. Two sacks today, three in the season for Ted Page. Ryan Evans hit from behind as he drew a crowd. Van Kerr gets the initial hit, but a lot of other people joined in. You know, this Boston College defense is, is very much a blue-collar type defense. Not a lot of big names, not a lot of stars on it. It's very team-oriented in their concept, and they give you a lot of looks. They try to confuse the offense a little bit, but they're all on the same page. You can see great hustle, and, and they're very physical. Even though they're not a big defense, they're a very physical defense. Not the fastest, but they get there, too. Third down and 13 for Maurice Deshazo. Ball at the Tech 29. Let's look for BC. They get him in third and long. They flush him out, right side. Got a man underneath. Complete, but it looks like it'll be short of a first down. Let's see where they mark it. One mark says first down, another mark says no. Yeah, well, oh, this ought to be interesting. Here. This ought to really be interesting for Virginia Tech. One spot is right in front of the first down marker, another on the uh, back side. Now, this is going to show you the athletic ability of DeShazo. They had him penned in here, but he's still able to keep buying himself some time, get to the outside, and make a terrific throw to Michael Williams on the sideline. I mean, that was a designed rollout for the quarterback to leave the pocket. BC guessed right and had a couple guys outside. But they were still able, he was still able to come up with a big throw. 
the situation we had earlier. This is about one chain link away. That's about it. A chain link away. They're at the very end of the... Look at that. They're at the exact end of the chain. Well, this, the first is a, down. this is a no-brainer, too. You've got Jim Pine, who's an All-American center. He's been your best offensive lineman for four years. You've got a good athletic running quarterback in Maurice DeShazo. This is quarterback sneak all the way. You only need six inches for the first down. Two for two on fourth and one situations. They'll follow Pine. Long count, and that's what they do. Push ahead and get the first. Yeah, they didn't have to consult anybody on that one. <laughs> you could save the fee, you know? Yeah, that one's an easy one. You know, you don't want to beat Tim Morabito if you're the nose tackle on this play. This is coming right at you, and uh, I'll tell you what, this is ugly. You've got Jim Pye coming right at you. He tries to loop around him. He's guessing quarterback sneak, too. He tried to loop to the outside. Only problem is Maurice DeShazo went to the left, and he looped opposite. I know you know I'm coming. Thomas, almost a good play, but Thomas gets outside. He's forced it right into the cups of water. Do you believe that? Some places that might have drawn a penalty. Terrence Wiggins drives him out of bounds, but Eric Shorter was the one that almost got him for a tackle for a loss in the backfield. Well, Dwayne Thomas here, he, he eludes a tackle. Now, Eric Shorter doesn't miss many open field tackles, but he does a nice job giving him a little stutter step. And watch the end of this play. A little commercial for Gatorade right here. Dwayne Thomas wipes out a... And he's you know what? You know who suffers now? The trainer has to get and stack, restack every one of those glasses and fill them up with water. It probably took him a half an hour to do that. And he says, hey, tell the intern to do it. Second and a long two. Big deal. Thomas gets the ball. Cuts back right into Stephen Boyd. No game. Trying to cut back against the green. Look at Boyd. He's smiling. He says, hey, give me those kind of plays. Come right back to me, baby. Well, Stephen Boyd just knows where this play's coming. You can see he is right in the hole waiting. And, and a lead play like that, it's amazing they don't have somebody blocking Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd is unaccounted for on this play, and he's able to step right up into the hole and meet the ball carrier and drive him backwards. Big play in there by Stephen Boyd. Sure was. Ball moved about two feet. Edmonds powering, got the first down and more. First down, Virginia Tech inside the 45, down about the 42-yard line. Terrence Wiggins finally ends it, but these fullbacks are real pile drivers. Swarm and Edmonds have played well today. Well, there's nothing fancy about Virginia Tech in the way they play football. They're going to give it to the fullback. They're going to keep pounding at you. They're going to keep doing the same thing. Watch Edmonds come right through. Stephen Boyd, a play ago, Boyd makes the good play. This time, Edmonds makes the good play, running over Boyd. Edmonds averaging 5.2 a pop. Thomas sliding outside, breaks a couple of tackles, and Virginia Tech keeps moving. Five-yard pickup, Tech down 28-14, 4.50 to go, third period. Stephen Boyd, another tackle. Got that left elbow problem there. He suffered a couple of weeks ago, but it's not that big a deal. You see him involved all the time, and the clock keeps rolling. But again, you're seeing good patience by not only Maurice DeShazo, but offensive coordinator Ricky Bussell. He, he's realizing, hey, we're still in this ball game. Let's not abandon what we've been doing all year. You know, let's keep controlling the football and doing it on the ground. Edmonds with the drive. Super block. Edmonds got a chance to go. He cuts back the fullback. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 37 yards for Brian Edmonds, his second touchdown of the season, and Tech right back in the ball game. Well, Tom Coughlin told me yesterday when we sat in his office, Dave, he said, I'm very concerned with not stopping their fullback, not letting their fullback run through our defense. And here again, he breaks through the arm tackle of Brian Howlett, and it's off to the races for the fullback. And I'll tell you what, that fullback, Brian Edmonds, deserves that touchdown because he has done all the blocking, him and Joe Swarm. It's great for a fullback to make a big play now and now. Ryan Williams, extra point is good. John Burke and everybody in the offensive line, Kanani Malone, Pine McMahon, and Barry, outstanding job combined with the work of Brian Edmonds. 28-21, we're back after these messages.
long drive for Virginia Tech. That one an 80-yarder, and over the last 13 games now, that's 24 drives of 75 yards or more. Well, we talked about John Burke, the tight end, how important he is in the in the running game of Virginia Tech. Here he is right here. He's 6'3", 250 pounds, almost like another offensive lineman. They're going to run the draw. Now watch the block as he comes out and just annihilates Stephen Boyd on this play. Take a look at this. John Burke's going to show pass. He's going to come out and then watch the block. Gets right into the body of Boyd. And even when the running back is past him at this point, he does not quit on his block Ooh. until he takes him down to the ground. And I'll tell you what, another block down the field by Steve Sanders, the wide receiver. Just enough of a block to spring the back into the end zone. That is a lot of grit for Virginia Tech. They were down 28-14. John Burke, the offensive line. They've been rooting some people out. Here's Ryan Williams. Sidewinding kick. Boy, he wanted that one. There's a room. That's it back. That's Tony Ransom. Boy, he came out of nowhere. Penalty flag late on that play. A 26-yard return by Tony Ransom. Do we have enough guys in college football playing to the crowd looking at me, 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 or what? I'm going to get a face mask on Virginia Tech, and I'll tell you what, that's... After your offense scores like that and your defense has had problems all day stopping VC, you don't want to give them this kind of field position. But look at Glenn Foley on first down. And I'll tell you what, first down is the best down to throw the football in college football because you have the run-pass balance. You have both things that are effective. And he has just been outstanding on first down. Two tight ends, two wideouts for Foley and VC. 28-21 ball game. Foley indeed will throw. Underneath, Gibbons, no, sir. Gibbons had a big one for 29 earlier in the game. Wade Knight, number 20 covering for Virginia Tech. Big target, ball thrown slightly behind Gibbons, who's a big fella out of Avon Old Farm School from Darien, Connecticut. Matter of fact, Brett came in as a Smith and Street High School All-American. Ball at the BC 43, 4.05 left in the third quarter, 28-21. Mitchell catches this time, big play, big yardage. Virginia Tech territory at the 35, first down Boston College, 22-yard game. Pete Mitchell, another big play. Well, again, you're just, you're working the matchup. Tom Coughlin has found the matchup that he likes. That's Pete Mitchell, the tight end, working against Ken Brown. Now, Brown has great speed, but he's just not doing a great job staying in man-to-man -man coverage on the tight end. Coming into the game, Phil Elmation probably thought Brown could hang with Mitchell. Mitchell doesn't have great speed, but he really knows how to run precise patterns, and that's what's hurting Virginia Tech right now. Foley slicing up Virginia Tech. 308 yards, fitting for more. Give it! Touchdown! 35 yards, Glenn Foley making it happen. 34-21, Boston College. Again, watch Glenn Foley look to his left and freeze the free safety, come back to his right, the free safety's out of play, and look who's on defense again. It's Ken Brown again, this time working on the bigger tight end, Gibbons. Look at Foley, he is on a roll, he knows it, he's got the matchups that he wants. His tight ends working against some linebackers from Virginia Tech. Duck shooting for Foley. Whoa, the snap goes through Foley's head. Hands, rather. So that play did not go well. The snapper's Pete Mitchell, and Pete got way too much on that one. And Foley is down. 34-21, BC back after these messages. It was amazing. We talked about how they use their tight ends and, and create mismatches. This is Mitchell, their number one receiver. They got him in motion, and the free safety is going to follow. That's going to open up the middle of the field, a big opening here, and the other tight end, Gibbons is going to run the post against Kenny Brown, and it's going to be wide open for the touchdown. Watch, they clear the free safety out. The middle's open. No one back there. Foley's able to just lob the ball right over the defense, and Gibbons comes up with a touchdown. Now, here's the point after touchdown where Foley takes a pretty good pop as the snap went right through his hands. Well, the ball went way over his hand. He takes one right there. He doesn't know where the ball is, and he takes one in the back again from Stacy Henley. And 
that's one of those where you just kind of curl up in the in the fetal position to try to protect yourself. Amen. Well, he's having a day and a half. 18 for 25, 343 yards, two touchdowns. He's averaging 19.1 yards per completion. Beckley kicking off to Thomas. Squibs it, could be trouble. Tommy Edwards gets his hands on it, has to retreat. Does he pick up the wall? One man to beat. Oh, he took a lick there. Eric Shorter, who's been quite active today. Eric's been a really good performer. Number six for Boston College makes the stop. Virginia Tech down 34-21, 326 to go, third period. Has a bad field position at the 18. Well, that time they opted to go with the squib kick, and it ended up being very effective. Edwards wasn't sure if it was going to go out of bounds, almost misplayed it. Here's the rollout. Worst starting position for DeShazo and Tech throws it out of bounds. Wise move, too. There was not a lot going on there as Brian Edwards was the intended receiver. Now bear in mind, Maurice DeShazo is without his primary target, and that being his wide receiver, Antonio Freeman, who was the leading receiver coming into this game. 28 catches, nine of them for touchdowns. He went out with the ankle problem early in the ball game, and he's out. And you can see, I mean, that, that's a guy that Maurice is very comfortable with throwing the football, and right now he's got to do it with a couple different guys. Cornelius White, Steve Sanders will have to step up big. Balls at the 18, second and 10. Flushed out, sacked. Third sack of the afternoon. Tim Morabito got him this time. This is just a great effort play by Morabito. He doesn't really get a rush, but all he does is keep fighting. And now when DeShazo steps up, Morabito just kind of falls back into the play and is able to just instinctively reach up and knock the legs out from under Maurice DeShazo. That's a, just a situation where a guy is really not making a difference, but he keeps fighting and keeps fighting and comes up with the play. DeShazo, 9 for 17 now. 108 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. Needs a big play here. That time, home run ball. Going for Sanders, down the middle, got it! He beat Joe Camara. Oh, baby, what a play to Steve Sanders covering 47 yards. Well, folks, that one there is just not supposed to happen. On third down and 13, they've only got one chance. They're gonna go play action here and throw the deep post. The free safety, Terrence Wiggins, is not able to come back and help. You can see he's too shallow. He's way out of position. That's too hard for a cornerback to ask a cornerback by himself to defend the middle of the field. The free safety has to help him on that play. Jack driving again. Edmonds, second effort, picks up a few more yards. I talked about the defensive breakdown on that play, but let's not forget, you still have to throw it and catch it. That was a wonderful throw by Maurice DeShazo. That it was. Boy, when he gets back there to just unload, it's a pretty sight, isn't it? He, you know, he just continues to make the big plays throwing the deep ball. I mean, you, you, you figure that sooner or later his luck's going to run out, but he just continues. He has a great touch on the deep ball. Edmonds and Thomas in the backfield. Edmonds having a great day. Six rushes, 59 yards. Big hole, cut back by Thomas. Breaks the tackle. Boy, Virginia Tech first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Michael Reed missed the tackle. 14-yard pickup by Thomas. Well, check out the blocking on the linebackers. There's Jimmy Pine getting through on, on uh, Boyd and the fullback. Brian Edmonds gets through on Howlett, and that when you secure those two blocks, that opens up a big lane for your running back. Nice job by the center and the fullback picking up the two inside backers. You can hear the pops all the way up here. White at the bottom of your screen. Sanders to the top. The option chased down. Good job. Morabito met McDet Mumula. Chased the play down from behind and helped Deshazo to no gain. Mamula is a guy who is just getting better and better. He's a tall, angular guy who can run. Watch him chase the play down from the backside. DeShazo doesn't know he's there, and actually Maurice is very lucky that he doesn't drop that football because he doesn't know that the backside pressure's coming. But Mamula is a guy, Steve Zabo said, he's learning how to keep his engine running a little bit more at a time. Sprint out left side. 
to Shazel. Buys time. Got a man too high. Boy, he had Cornelius White wide open at the five-yard line. And if he could have squared up his shoulders, he might have been able to complete that. Well, that's an awful tough throw right there. Rolling to his left, trying to elude pressure and trying to square up enough to really drive the football to his receiver. That's that's tough duty right there. Now it's third and ten, third and nine rather. Look for a run here because most teams are going to pass here, but you've seen the success that Tech has had in long situations when they keep it on the ground. This is a team that can finish it off. Outstanding numbers there. Sanders, White, bottom. Oh, there's the blitz. Mamula to Shazo. Picks up time. Got a man wide open. Edmonds, foul. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. The Shazo bought time, made the big play. It's 34 27. Boy, this kid is something. And that's the kind of play the defensive coordinator, Steve Zabel, is pulling his hair out right now in the booth a couple doors down from us. I mean, you call the perfect defense. You got a guy right in his face. Now watch this. He's going to sprint naked to the left. There's a guy right in his face. Mamula can't make the tackle. Now watch. DeShazo buys time, gets away from another guy, and has the presence to find his receiver, the outlet guy, the fullback, Edmonds, who scores his second touchdown of the game. And there was no way Edmonds was going to let Mike Reed stop him. No good! Boy, we're seeing everything in this game. Ryan Williams had only missed three this year on the extra points. He misses it. But it's a break for Virginia Tech since the Eagles had missed one earlier, so it's still a seven-point margin. with his second TD of the day. Again, unbelievable by DeShazo. Now, they're going to send both backs this way, and DeShazo's going to roll out here naked. No protection, and you're going to see Mamula come off the corner here and have a clean shot. Now, once the fullback checks down over here, that's going to be his outlet, and you're going to see DeShazo elude the initial rush. Watch him slip right by Mamula. Mamula can't believe it, grabbing for air out there. Now watch the presence of mind to pick up his fullback, the little dump pass, and the fullback does the rest. That's just outstanding poise and confidence by Maurice DeShazo. What a ball game, 34-27. We figured there'd be a lot of scoring, but I think this has exceeded my expectations. I was looking along the lines at 24-14, 24-21. Here's Ryan Williams with the kickoff. High and it will be returned. Kenyatta Watson at the 11. Picked up a hole and finally brought down. Danny Osborne, number 26. And Jermaine Holmes, number 82, bring him down. But now the question of this ball game still remains. Can Virginia Tech slow down Glenn Foley in the Boston College offense? So far, he has had his way. Look at those numbers. Uh, another potentially another career game as we have 18 seconds left in the third quarter. His best game coming in was the, the big game in the win over Syracuse when he threw for 423 yards. He may surpass that one today. The rate he's going, he's got a real good chance of doing that. Checking off the line of scrimmage. Virginia Tech's got eight men in the box. Green, oh, man, what a hit. A follow the, uh, the tackle from the right linebacker. Kenny Brown came in to close that down from the back side. Ken Brown, boy, got a good piece of green on that one. Quite a ball game, a shootout here at Boston College. Three quarters complete. It's Boston College 34, Virginia Tech 27. Back with fourth quarter action after these words from our local stations. The Eagles lead it 34-27. Boston College started off with 14 points in the first quarter. Both teams scored two touchdowns in the second. Virginia Tech with 13 in the third. Both teams have missed a point after. Here's Foley on a second and eight at the 30. Hank Coleman stands up. There's a sack. Loose ball. Derrico. Virginia Tech's got the ball. Down by seven at the 28-yard line. Hank Coleman forced it. Virginia Tech right back in business. The turnover makes it happen. 
Well, now that emotion is coming back to the Tech defense. You can see they finally made a big play. They flush him out. Look, the pressure up the middle by Waverly Jackson. That forces him to move his feet. Then the tackle by Hank Coleman jars the ball loose as George Del Rico comes up with the, with the fumble recovery. A huge play and a play desperately needed by this Tech defense. Virginia Tech takes over. Frank Beamer talked about we have to make him move his feet. We can't let him just get in the pocket, sit there, read the defense, and throw on rhythm. That time they were able to do it, and they were able to capitalize with a big play. Second BC fumble, balls at the Eagles 28. Thomas, big hole, up the middle. He lost the ball! But he fell right on it. A good stick by Brian Hallett caused the fumble. Thomas fell right on it. You see him tapping himself on the head. He knows it's his fault, but he recovered. Gain of four. What a game. Thomas, 65 yards on 20 carries. Rough going, only 3.3 a pop. Quick look. Thomas gets knocked down, should have caught it. Hit hard by Boyd. Well, he probably should have caught it, but when you got a wide receiver out there in the slot, you don't want to make him have to go up in the air to catch the ball. Look, the ball's way too high thrown by DeShazo. When you have a receiver out there, just get him the football, let him run in the open spaces. Good idea by DeShazo. Nobody was guarding the slot, but the pass was too high. I was told earlier that we may see a throw up, an option pass, throw back to the quarterback at some point for Virginia Tech. We haven't seen it yet. Throwback pushes ahead. That's Edmonds who scored twice, once on a run, one on a pass. Brian Hallett brings him down. And a huge play by Brian Hallett on this one. Third down, they go to the fullback, which has been very successful, but Hallett right there in the hole and doesn't let this one get through his arms. Nice sure tackle at the legs by Brian Hallett. That was the play Edmonds had scored on, a 37-yard run to make it 28-21. Frank Beamer electing to go to the field goal. The good thing for his kicker here, he's right in the middle of the field. Doesn't have an angle to deal with for Ryan Williams. 38-yard attempt. He missed it! Ryan Williams misses a 38-yard field goal straight on, and Tech can't take advantage of the turnover. Second miss on the day for Ryan Williams. He's now three for seven on the season. Heartbreaking miss for Frank Beamer. We're back after these messages. At Alumni Stadium in Boston College. And here's a critical miss for Ryan Williams. He's got two misses today. And you can see that he's heartbroken about it. His club down by a touchdown from 38 yards. Well, you can see Beamer played the average as he has the ball right in the middle of the field, and it's just a bad kick. The ball just goes dead left right off the foot of Ryan Williams. Beamer thinking, hey, 13 minutes and 30 seconds left in the ball game. Let's get three on the board. That puts us down by four points. Our defense finally got a little bit of enthusiasm. We think we can score some more. As it turns out, they find themselves still down seven. Kicking has come up short in the conference this year. Glenn Foley and company take over. A blitz. Green, good run. Cross the 25. Kenny Brown in there, along with George Del Rico, to make the stop. And we're joined in our booth. We'll get to that right after this play. It's a second down and five at the 26. Well, it's second and four. Campbell bounces off, bounces off, close to a first down. Things starting to get tight here in a ball game, and we have an injured player, injured tech player. It's Cornell Brown, the left defensive end. And it looks like he's suffering from a cramp. That gives us an opportunity to, to welcome Brian Flujol, who's the executive director of the Cork West Bowl, which will be played January 1 at Joe Robbie Stadium. And the Cork West Bowl will get the third team from the Big East Conference after the coalition picks. It'll be the Big East number three team, hopefully against the Southeast Conference number five and Brian good to have you with us thank you well uh, I'll tell you what this is like the the bowl uh, Holyfield <laughs> fight that's gonna happen tonight this is a great ball game 
No question about it. And one thing you'll like to have for a bowl for a bowl game is teams or teams that can get up and down the field and certainly have these two teams today. Absolutely. And, and Virginia Tech really in the Big East has been a surprise, I think, to everybody this year. And uh, most people probably counted them out here in the first half. But if you've seen them play this year, you knew they were able or capable of scoring some points. So uh, it's still a lot of football to be played. The Cart Quest folks involved with a bowl game. I know everybody in your organization is pleased with that. Yeah, it's exciting to have uh, have a new title sponsor in CarQuest, and uh, they're with us for the next couple of years, as uh, as is the Big East. These kids know the bowl bid certainly is on the line. Good fake, Foley outside, going to run for it. No, sir, not quick enough. Not quick enough. What do you think, Todd? Broken play, or was that a design play, Todd? No, I think they were going with the naked bootleg. I mean, Foley not really known as a runner, but watch. I think this is definitely, he's going to fake the ball, then he pulls it out, going to try to run the bootleg, and there's nothing there. Good job on the perimeter by Virginia Tech. I think they tried to fool the defense, get them all sucked in on third and one, and let the quarterback come out there on the bootleg. Well, it wasn't a big gain, but Foley does pick up the first down. Ball's at the 31-yard line. 34-27 BC over Virginia Tech. Coming up in the 12-minute mark, the blitz. Flanker screen the boy. Boy, he pick up room. He's got nobody to beat. Right down the middle of the field. Touchdown, Boston College. Oh, baby. 68 yards on the throw and run. see an outstanding block by the center Tom Nalen this is going to be the key block they're going to throw the quick screen now watch your center he's going to release out and watch the block he gets right there into your screen right on the middle linebacker George Del Rico pulls him right out of the hole and Ivan Boyd runs straight down the middle of the field for the long touchdown Foley with three TD passes 411 yards on the day there is one happy quarterback because, uh, you know, this is a game that the momentum was starting to change. Virginia Tech was starting to fight their way back into control of this game, and Glenn Foley answers with a resounding no. Could be the crusher. We still got 12 minutes to find out. 41-27 PC. Back after these words from our local station. 62 yards, two touchdowns, and 68 yards on this one. Well, Boston College has had some success with this middle screen. They come with the screen right there. Glenn Foley's going to pick it up. Now watch, freeze it right there. Look at Tommy Nalen right here. He's going to get the block on Del Rico. He's going to knock him into another Tech defender. And I'll tell you what, it's clear sailing after that for Ivan Boyd right down through the middle of the defense. Great job by the center, Tom Nalen, slipping out in front of that screen and picking off two Tech defenders. Glenn Foley's thrown for 411 yards, 411. Tech better call 911. This crowd into it. This is as an exchange as you're going to see all year. 41 27, 12 minutes still to play. Line drive kick by Beckley. Knocked down by Renault White. They better fall on it, and they do the smart thing and fall on it inside the 20 and about the 17-yard line. Brian Flagell is still with us from the uh, Cork West Bowl, and Brian, you would pray to have a game like this. Absolutely, and uh, you know, with, with Virginia Tech still being able to score in 12 minutes to go, uh, who knows what can happen. We'd love to have either of these teams. Ball's at the 17-yard line. Here's DeShazo to start things off again. They run the draw, and the big hole left side gets a block. Ooh, he ran right into number 17. That's Mike Reed, and he's hurt. He's hurt. He tried to run over him. The wideout was blocking Reed, and Edmonds took a, a route right into the uh, defender. Well, again, you can see the back's just going to get hit right at the end here. He's going to turn sideways a little bit to try to make another move. And a big hit by Terrence Wiggins right on, just right up under the rib cage there, right under where your pads cover up, and just kind of a sensitive spot right there for a running back. 
Well, we have this time out on the field while they attend to Brian Edmonds. Uh, Brian, can you tell us about some of the uh, preparations that the Cork West Bowl folks are doing, uh, getting ready for the bowl on January 1? Yeah, well, uh, the teams will come down on the 26th, and so uh, right now we're just we have, we're arranging all the parties and functions that will take place uh, in Fort Lauderdale for when the two teams arrive. At the same point in time, we're out uh, you know, on the other side the, the Big East representative will play a Southeast Conference representative. So we're out uh, this week seeing who that might end up being. Right now, who, who figures to be uh, at the, some of the candidates for uh, the Southeast Conference? Well, we're looking at uh, Georgia, Mississippi, and even Arkansas still has an outside shot. Another big play for Dwayne Thomas. He picks up the first down out to the 35-yard line. Picks up eight yards. Well, again, Virginia Tech has not really been stopped offensively by BC. They're still trying to run the football, give it to the tailback, good push up the middle by their center, Jim Pine, the All-American, and getting five, six, seven yards at a chunk. Virginia Tech trying to get back close. There's the four, oh, what a pop. Stephen Boyd got a good one on Joe Swarm, but Swarm kept the motor running. He got up to the 40. Yeah, you better bring a little bit more into the hole to stop Joe Swarm. I mean, he, he is a tough, look at that, look at the guy. Got the big neck row on there and got the, got the pads. That's a typical old style fullback. Just loves to stick his nose in there. Fullbacks and middle linebackers, they're, they're a breed unto themselves. Second and five at the 40. Out of the eye play action for DeShazel all day. Got a man down there. Number 17 is there. Picked off. It's picked off by Joe Pumas. Well, Joe Kamara was beat on a post pattern earlier in the game, a deep one down the middle. This time he plays it perfectly. You're going to watch. He just draws a bead on this ball. This is a well-thrown ball by DeShazo. Again, going to the post pattern. And watch the corner at the end. Time the jump, cut right in front of the receiver, and come down with the intercept. A one-handed interception at that. Just an outstanding job. Look again. Down the middle. What a play by Joe Kamara. One-handed interception, kind of trapped it up against his headgear. Outstanding job for Joe Kamara. Back of the white folks. What a game. And Brian, uh, well, Joe from the Clark West Bowl, you guys are going to be in good shape with one of these teams. And we thank you for coming up and joining us in the booth. And I know that the BC folks and the Virginia Tech uh, people would hope to see you all down on uh, January 1st in the Clark West Bowl at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. Well, thank you, and we look uh, forward to a long relationship with the Big East. Super. Thank you very much. You've seen a good game here. Second time DeShazo has been picked off this afternoon. 41-27. Campbell up the middle. And he picks up some good yardage. Five-yard gain for Darnell Campbell. Two of the highest-scoring teams in the country going at it today. BC, the number four-scoring team in the conference at 34-4 a game. Virginia Tech, number one in the Big East, sixth in the NCAA. Second down and five at the 22. Campbell is straight ahead. Ooh, he took a late hit, too. Four-yard gain. The late entry there was Carnell Brown. They are your scoring leaders in the NCAA. Virginia Tech right there, 37-6. Total offense, both teams are right in the middle, right in the hunt. And they're living up to these rankings today big time. Third and one at the 26, clock at 9, 13 and counting. 41-27, Boston College. Campbell, oh! Did he run over that first man? Yes, he did. Hank Coleman took the hit. Again, take a look at this. Darnell Campbell at 225 pounds. He's got some beef in there, and he's going to run right into George Del Rico, the middle linebacker, Oof. drive him back, and still stay on his feet and keep moving the ball forward. I mean, there's some there's some pad popping going on down there right now. Better bring it strapped up and ready to go. First and 10. Ball at the 28. 
BC taking over after Joe Camara interception. Campbell just straight up the middle again. Draws a crowd, gets a good game. Eight yards. Boston College again, I know I've made this point over today, but you look at that 541 yards of total offense and, and part of their success is the fact that they've mixed the run and the pass so effectively. I mean, they really keep a defense off balance. And other than that one drive where Virginia Tech came up with the fumble, Boston College has, has really had the upper hand against this defense. Coming up on 1,000 yards. Game by combined by these teams. Campbell may get it on this one. Inside Virginia Tech territory at the 48-yard line. First down, BC. Torrey and Gray with the stop. 16 more for Darnell Campbell. When you play an eight-man front, when you have eight guys around the line of scrimmage, if you break the initial contain, as Darnell Campbell's going to do here, he breaks one tackle by Hank Coleman. Now, once he gets past the line of scrimmage, there's no more defenders out there. The only guy that there is there to make the tackle is the free safety. When you bunch everybody up around the line of scrimmage, if you can break through that initial surge, you got a lot of room to run. Campbell averaging 96.7 yards per game, coming up on that number right now. Got two scores today. Just gonna run him. Breaks through that front eight. Now Rico brings him down, saves a bigger gain. That one went for six. And credit the inside blocking of, of Boston College. The center, Tommy Nalen, the guards, Greg Landry and Mark Borelli, really doing a great job blocking on the inside, taking control of the two inside tackles and the linebacker. Darnell Campbell going off to a big round of applause. Fabulous game here at Alumni Stadium. Dave Sims and Todd Blackledge with you. BC 41-27 over Virginia Tech. David Green picks his way into the secondary. He's inside the 40. And that looks like it'll be good enough for a first down. Now I'm going to tell you something else that Boston College is showing in this ballgame right now in this drive. They've scored very quickly against Virginia Tech. They've been able to hit the big plays, but now when they need a drive that eats up the clock, when they can move the football by running it and eating up the clock, they've been able to do it. I'll tell you what, this is this is just outstanding offensive football by Tom Coughlin and the Eagles. That was good enough for a first down. Dwight Shirley now in the backfield behind Lynn Foley, who's thrown for 411 yards, his career best 423 at Syracuse five weeks ago. So movement by Laro. Dead ball. False start on the offense. The false start will cost BC some yardage. Buddy Ward with the call. Buddy Ward and his crew. Rusty Spindell, Bristol Martin, Pat Radisick, Charles Phillips, Al Riverin, and Jeff Triplett. The officials for today's game. First and 15, ball back to the 42-yard line. 6-12 to go. Give it to Green. Ran up the back of Lara, and then a heck of a lot there. Two, two yards on that play. BC having taken over at its own 17 on the first interception of the season by Joe Camara. Eagles trying to wrap up the clock and this game they're up 41 27 clock at 540 again very impressive that Boston College when they needed a drive to keep it on the ground and eat up some clock they've been able to do it now they've got a second and long situation look for the throw 10th play of the drive Foley steps up got a ton of room to run he's asking for somebody to come to him and he bounces it to Keith Miller Foley run out of bounds hard. Boy, the room just opened up on the right side, and Foley couldn't get enough on it to throw it to Keith Miller. Now, here's the difference. We've got two outstanding quarterbacks in the conference playing in this game today. That situation, if that's Maurice DeShazo, that's when he's at his best, when he's outside contained, when he's creating in the open field. Glenn Foley, when he has to leave the pocket, he's not nearly as effective as when he can drop back, get set, read the defense, and throw on rhythm. And both guys have shown what they can do today. Both guys have maxed out nice. Look at this drive. Your Virginia Tech fan 
you got to be dying with this. They pick up the blitz. Foley's got a man down. Being caught by Keith Miller at the 10-yard line. First down, Boston College. Foley on target again, this time for 30 yards. And that will give him 441 yards, a career best. Well, I'd like to say I know what this feels like, but I never threw for 400 yards in a game. But Glenn Foley is just on a roll right now. And again, he looks the safety off. He's thrown to the wide receiver. Now look who he's working on. He's working on Dwayne Knight. Dwayne Knight is a linebacker. Now granted, Knight has great speed at 6'3", 207 pounds, but he's not gonna stay with Keith Miller very often in one-on-one -on -one situations. If he catches 98 yards for Miller. Green runs through a tackle. Another tackle inside five to the three-yard line. BC wearing out Virginia Tech now. Scott Jones makes the tackle. What outstanding effort from David Green, who's out of Mount Kisco, New York, Fox Lane High School. David Green just never gives up. Again, some fresh legs in the game. Campbell's been getting most of the running here, but look at the bro broken tackle, and what does that signify? A little bit of fatigue on the part of the Virginia Tech defense. When you start missing tackles, it shows that that defense has been on the field a long time and they're getting tired. Campbell's run for 84 yards, Green for 80. Price in motion. Three tight ends left side. Guess where the ball's going? They go left side. Green, no, sir, but he's down to the one. No, Rico and Yarborough stop him like a doggone Chinese fire drill with all that movement. They shift about four or five different shifts in that one play. Finally get set with double tight ends to the, to the left side. They go with an unbalanced look and watch. They try to get you outmatched, but a nice job stringing it out. That time, I think it's William Yarbrough makes the play on the corner. The cornerback does a nice job stringing that play out. Game's over if BC scores a touchdown here. Green had the lead. Laro will lead Campbell. Third and one at the two. Campbell brought for his third touchdown. He didn't get it, but he's close. Probably good enough for first down, it is. It's good enough for first down for Boston College. It'll be first and goal. Darnell Campbell didn't practice on Thursday, had a little bit of a thigh bruise. Tom Coughlin opted to rest him, give him an extra day off. And I'll tell you what, it looks like it was an excellent decision because Darnell showing no effects of that problem today and really running hard for the Eagles. This drive has been forever. Nobody knows it more than Frank Beamer. 16th play coming up. Length of the ball to go. Campbell's got two scores already. Make it three. First and goal inside the one yard line. I'd give it to Darnell Campbell for as many times as it takes to score. It only takes him one time. Gets the good lead block by Gordon Laro. Gets a nice block by the center, Tom Nalen. And it's up and over the top for Darnell Campbell, the leading scorer in the nation. Third touchdown this afternoon, and that just about does it. Why don't we go out on a limb a little bit? 333 to go. Gordon on that special teams play. And BC with a spectacular drive that ate up a lot of clock. Capped off by Darnell Campbell. 48-27. We're back after these messages. 83 yards, 6.52 off the clock, and BC in command now. 48-27 over Virginia Tech. Tom Coughlin and company. Can breathe a little bit easier now. Clock reading at 3.33. That's the amazing thing, that they could hold the ball for 15 plays. I mean, that, that, that is just clutch performance by your offensive line. That's who sets the tempo in a drive like that. That, that is a, an absolutely picture-perfect thing for your offensive line. 15 plays and 83 yards. And, and you're going against a defense that knows, hey, if we needed a big play, we have to get it now. And they weren't able to stop Boston College. And just think, if they had made that field goal at Northwestern, Right. Going back earlier in the season, BC has used that as a starting point for this run, going for their sixth straight win. Looking good right now. 
most disappointing thing about that loss is in Tom Coughlin's tenure here, that's the only game that they lost that they probably should have won. And they just didn't play well enough to win. Edwards at the one. Well, he has got tremendous determination in second and third effort. Gets it up across the 15. Tommy Edwards. Joe Kamara's interception set up that long drive for Boston College. 48-27 is the score here with 3.25 to go, fourth period. We're back after these messages. We'll get a lot of notice after this win. 25th in the coaches poll this week. Going against number 23, Virginia Tech, and Glenn Foley has attracted a, a lot of attention today with this outfit. And talking to him yesterday in a local deli saying, hey, next year this time I want to be in the big league. Where? I don't care. Just want to get a shot. And he should get a shot because uh, he, he has certainly done it over his career at BC. And again, he's on a six-game roll right now that is as good as any quarterback probably ever experienced. New quarterback for Virginia Tech, Jim Drunkenmiller. He's got this one to Cornelius White, who's hit hard. Knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line by Michael Reed. Drunken Miller, 6'4", 221 pounds, a redshirt freshman out of Northampton High School, Northampton, PA. You know, you mentioned that Northwestern game and the, the bitter loss for BC. You know, had they not lost that game, even if they just win unimpressively coming into this week, they come in ranked in the top, maybe even in the top 10, definitely in the top 15. This is this is a good football team that, you know, the bad news is that they got that loss and it's hurting them now. The good news is they really took, uh, you know, took notice after that and received a wake-up call and have turned their season around because of it. Final three minutes and change. Duncan Miller has this one dropped by Cornelius White. Duncan Miller's a big, strong guy. A guy who spends a lot of time in the weight room, very strong, strongest quarterback that's ever played at Virginia Tech. Also has a strong but somewhat erratic arm sometimes. He's a young guy that, that they expect big things out of in the future. Gets it out to White. Got the first down, cuts back inside, and a good tackle by Terrence Wiggins. Tech in its hurry up offense, down 48 to 27 at the three minute mark. Still to come on the BC schedule will be at. This is good work for Jim Druckenmiller. Get some game experience, a chance to run the two minute offense. They try to mix a little draw in here, but good chance for him to get game pace, game speed. Renal White tried to get some iron. He's grabbed down as we were talking about the upcoming schedule. Kit Notre Dame and West Virginia still to come. After those first couple weeks, you would have thought that they didn't match up very well with those last two games, but this is a team that's building confidence each week. I think they can play with both Notre Dame and West Virginia. Drill right to number 17, Brian Still. He's going to go in for a score for Virginia Tech. 57 yards on the post pattern. Wide open. Jim Drunkenmiller. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Makes it 48-33. Well, an excellent throw by Druckenmiller and a little bit of complacency maybe by BC's defense. A couple missed tackles right here, but Brian Still with a nice job running after the catch, showing that breakaway speed. And he's a guy, depending on the injury to Freeman, he's going to have to come up with more big plays next week in the game against Syracuse. Brian White missed a couple of field goals. And a PAT, tacking one on, 48-34. Virginia Tech's remaining schedule. We'll see them next week at Blacksburg against the Syracuse Orangemen, and then they'll finish it off, their traditional game against the University of Virginia. That will be at Charlottesville. Brian Still caught that touchdown pass, had a kind of a freak accident this summer right before the season started. He was in the weight room and dropped a weight and actually lost the tip of one of his fingers, had to get it surgically reattached, and he missed a, a good portion of training camp. He was, however, ready to go when the first game rolled around, but he's a, a young man that they really expect 
a lot of big things out of a guy who's got a lot of big play potential uh, at the wide receiver position, just a sophomore. BC has brought in all their backs and receivers. Play nine men up front looking for, as they anticipate, the onside kick from Ryan Williams. A lot of scoring today, 48-34, 2.21 to go in the ballgame. Back up there, Levin, back up. See how Miller handles this one. It goes to 10 yards, penalty flag, Boyd had it. Let's see if he came up with it. I think it's going to be offsides on Virginia Tech anyway. You bet. Even if they did come up with the ball, they were a little bit early taking off before the kick. Keith Miller came up with it, number 23. Illegal formation on the receiving team. Whoa. Legal formation on the receiving team. Yeah, the incredulous looks down on the sideline. Tom Coughlin, Gary Croton, quarterback coach, and Glenn Foley. Coughlin looking for some satisfaction right now. You have an incredulous look on the face of your partner here, too. I'm yeah, not I, sure I understand <laughs> what this one is. That's why I was going to figure out, let them explain it, because I hadn't seen that one. We will get an explanation, I'm sure, as will Tom Coughlin. We've got illegal formation on the receiving team. All players are not inside the nine-yard mark. Inside the what? Inside the nine-yard mark. Okay. So somebody was on the line at the ten-yard line mark, and just like being offsides on the receiving team. Make sure you're with us next Saturday, 12 noon. Lane Stadium will be the site for Syracuse and Virginia Tech. Ryan Williams getting it teed up again. Tech has seen one of the better offensive performances today by this BC club. You see up 48-34. And you see one of the effects of a, of a new rule change this year in college football. It used to be when you went for the onside kick at this point in the game, you'd put all 10 guys on one side. Now the rule is that you can you have to have at least four guys on each side. You can't load up, try to cut down on some of the potential injuries on this play right here. And that was an easy play right there. They didn't get the required hop. Brent Gibbons, the tight end, makes the recovery for BC. Normally when you are receiving an onside kick, you put your hands team or all state team or whatever you put out there, the guys that can catch the football tight ends and wide receivers. Spectacular numbers by BC over its last five games. Look at that, 539 yards and 42.6 points, and they've added handsomely to that today. Total offense today, 607 yards. 1,102, and you added Virginia Tech's 495. That's some afternoon, White Shirley. Well, Phil Elmation told me under the stadium here yesterday, he said, you know, our style is to go after the quarterback. We're going to bring pressure. We're going to bring people. We don't care who the quarterback is, whether it's Frank Costa at Miami or Glenn Foley at Boston College. They really were able to defend Miami pretty well with that philosophy and that style. However, Glenn Foley proved to be too, too good of a match for him today. He was able to read and recognize the defense very effectively, spread that defense out, get good matchups with his tight ends, working against linebackers in the middle of the field able to look off that three safety with his eyes get him going one way and throwing back the other way just a just a masterful career type afternoon for that guy glenn foley today he won't forget for a long time certainly the folks down in blacksburg won't forget him either you know, the Hokies ran into a very hot quarterback leading a very hot football team right now BC putting itself in real good shape to get a bowl bid. Park Quest folks here, we spoke with them earlier. Park Quest Bowl hit the third Big East team against the fifth Southeast Conference team. 
January 1 at Joe Robbie Stadium. BC in front, 48-34. Here's your time remaining. This has been an improper alignment. Dead ball, false start on the offense. There you have it, a false start. You know, the thing I like about Glenn Foley, too, is his two biggest games, his two career games this year have been in the two biggest games for his football team. Up in the Carrier Dome in the 33-29 win over Syracuse, and today in a game that everybody thought for this football team was the most important game of the year. That's when he has played his best football. Thank you, be said for Virginia Tech. Big game, no doubt about it. Green with that carry. And Virginia Tech calls a timeout. 48-34 with 2.03 to go. It's Boston College in front. First meeting between these two schools. That's the beauty of round robin play in the Big East Conference. Miami cruised over Pittsburgh. It's a final now, another Big East action. Her teams remain unbeaten in conference play. West Virginia big, Syracuse rolling. Not unexpected there either. Barnburner in the ACC. Syracuse obviously venting some of their frustrations on Temple, a team that Syracuse has been shut out two weeks in a row. That hasn't happened for a long time against George DeLeon's offense. And we'll get a look at them next week down in Blacksburg. Well, they're going to throw it again. And complete. Pete Mitchell takes a big lick from Stacy Henley, the strong safety. And there's another timeout by Frank Beamer's ball club, and that will do it for them. Not sure what's brighter, those pants Virginia Tech's wearing or Frank Beamer's sweater. I'll tell you, that is some bright orange they got going on what, that sideline. If you wanted to do some winter golfing, people will see it. <laughs> or deer hunting, either That's one. It. You're, you're in good shape wearing those deer hunting down in the woods. What's about Nebraska? You think they're for real this year? I think they've got an excellent quarterback in Frazier. I think that, that he's the kind of guy that's playing consistently, very much like Maurice DeShazo of uh, Virginia Tech, a guy who's starting to really come into his own this year. Auburn continues to roll. Maurice DeShazo had a good game, but didn't get enough help today. Tech will fall to three and three in the conference, while BC improves to four and one. Some great games coming up. The top three teams in the Big East. Miami still has to play West Virginia. Boston College has to play West Virginia also. Glenn Foley has been through the good and the bad times here at Boston College. One of the toughest things he went through as well as most of his teammates when a good friend of his, Jay McGillis, a strong safety on this team, died of leukemia in July of 1992. Some of the good things, of course, the, the big season last year, the Hall of Fame Bowl, and now capping it off with a tremendous senior year. That was the first punt by BC. Jeff Beckley got all of that one, put it into the end zone. For the Big East standings, read Miami 5-0, West Virginia 4-0, Boston College 4-1, Virginia Tech 3-3, three three, Syracuse 2-3, Rutgers 1-4, Pitt 1-4, and, and Temple 0-5. So the big three. Miami, West Virginia, and BC right now. Another completion to Brian Still. He connected with Still on a 57-yard touchdown pass. That was the same play, the little quick slant in, and that time Rob Clifford, the backup free safety, comes up with a nice sure tackle. Miller does have one heck of a strong arm. 
Sanders gets held up at the 45-yard line. He's close to first down yardage, and he didn't get out of bounds. This one thing would have been to get out of bounds. Drunken Miller, six for seven, 111 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, that's the choice you make right there. Do you fight for the extra yardage, or do you get out of bounds and save as much time? In that case, probably Sanders wasn't going to make a big play out of it, get out of bounds and stop the clock, but they get the clock's clock stoppage anyway because of an injured offensive line. Jim Petrovich, number 63, walking off the field. He's got a leg problem. And he probably can qualify that by saying maybe. A lot of the fans still here at Alumni Stadium were booing soon as they saw the stoppage of play on the field. I like the arm on Drucken Miller. Now, obviously, this is a mop-up situation, but he's throwing, throwing the ball very well, We're operating out of the shotgun. Again, the shotgun, something new that Virginia Tech put in during the off week after the West Virginia game. Uh, uh, something to add a new dimension to their offense, spread a defense out a little bit. They don't do it a, a great deal, but it, it can be very effective as a something to mix into your regular package. Big and strong, he does have the big arm, no question about it. Malfunction with the clock, they're resetting, that's why the delay here. Drucken Miller played a year after high school at Fork Union Military Academy. Same course that several of his teammates here at Virginia Tech have taken. Kind of a popular course to take get an extra year a year of maturity physically and emotionally out of high school and just a little better preparation for division one football running for his life can't do it fourth sack Mike Mamula involved on this one You can see on that play just the out-and-out -out speed that Mike Mamula has coming from the outside. And he's an outstanding pass rusher because of that speed. Burned a lot of time waiting for the wideouts to come back downfield. And, well, that ball had a lot of heat on it. It did it for Michael Williams. Break up a fourth and nine for Virginia Tech. So the Hokies will have to try to bounce back next week against the Syracuse Orangemen. to Tommy Edwards. Nothing going on there. BC enjoying a fabulous afternoon. And they'll get a chance to run out the final 37 seconds. A couple of big games, as we mentioned, remaining on the schedule for Boston College. And in a game like this, where the offenses coming in have been so efficient, so prolific, you don't expect necessarily to shut them down if you're a defensive football team, but what you hope to do is come up with a couple big plays. Both defenses did that, but Boston College came up with four big plays on the defensive side, a couple of key interceptions that killed drives uh, and really gave them the upper hand in this ballgame. Time to the final seconds. Your question for you. BC with West Virginia still to come, and West Virginia's got Miami in those games. Who do you like? Well, I'll tell you what, I think BC is playing as well as anybody in the conference right now. West Virginia on an obvious roll. Miami's still the top team in the conference. The question will be is how much will the Notre Dame game take out of Boston College before that matchup with West Virginia? There you have it. Final seconds winding down. A fabulous afternoon for Tom Coughlin and the Boston College Eagles. 48 to 34 is the final. Foley, what a day. 21 for 29, 448 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. And again, we mentioned just the role that he has been on in the last six weeks has been just outstanding. I mean, here's a guy that, you know, it just doesn't get much better than that. Over the last five games now, that's 16 touchdowns and only two interceptions, and he's only been sacked, I think, three or four times during that span as well. So this is a guy who is really getting it done, running this offense. And, you know, Tom Coughlin has entrusted this offense to Glenn Foley. He makes all the checks at the line of scrimmage in both the passing game and the running game. It's been uh, 
He's been a good horse to ride here in the, in the latter part of the season. No, no doubt about it. DeShazo limping off. He was valiant today, but didn't really have a lot of uh, opportunities. I think your point about checking off is probably as, as good a point as any. Fully, you could hear him changing up when he would go up and he would see the eight men in the box and then make the check off. And there he would come up with a big play. Well, it comes from great preparation, number one, which Tom Coughlin's a stickler and Glenn Foley's a veteran guy. And also uh, recognition, seeing what Virginia Tech wanted to do, getting your team in the right play. Don't let them come up with big plays on defense. And he was able to do that all afternoon. Boston College runs its record to six and two now with a four and one record in the Big East Conference, while Virginia Tech falls to six and three, three and three in the Big East Conference. A great game, a terrific win for the BC Eagles. Final 48 to 34. Today's game has been produced by Paul Carlson and directed by Jim Edmonds, along with the support of our fine technical staff. And let's take a look at some of those names. And Mike Gorman, this is Dave Sims. Once again, our final BC wins it 48-34 over Virginia Tech.